welcome everyone, welcome. It is, do you know, I have no idea what day of the week it is at all. And it really doesn't matter because it's a couple of days before Christmas and here I am uh, at Crafters TV from a different angle. We're giving you a little bit of a sneak peek somewhere else. Um, so I better move over here straight away before I get told we've seen too much. That will all be revealed in the new year, I do believe. My name's Derek Marks. It's lovely to have your company. I am, this is elf number two. I believe you had my twin brother here last week, Elfis Presley. I think he was having a little sing as well, wasn't he? Well, uh, I'm the proper one. Lovely to have your company as always. And do you know what? I haven't done a softer side of life for a long, long time. And that means we've got lo lots of gorgeous goodies, lots of wonders wonderful fabrics. I'm, I'm gonna need to get a new set of teeth put in sometime in the next couple of hours. That other bloke last week, he was much better. He could string a sentence together. We'll get him back, I think. Uh, but I tell you what, what we have got here Oh, I tell you what, I've waited so, so many months for this moment. I finally, 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 I've done lots of softer sides, um, but I have never, I have never been in this studio with the legend that is herself. It is Bernie Corner. Bernie, it's so lovely to be here with you. Hiya, Derek. It's so, honestly, the, uh, how long have you been here now? And this is the first show I that know. we've got together. Uh, I hope it's not that they've been keeping us apart and then now we're going to cause ructions on the on the last softer side of this uh, year before yeah. Christmas. I promise I will be on my best behaviour, Derek. I won't. I'm just telling you right now, I won't. So you can be, but I won't, let me tell you. So I will be getting you giggling all the way through this show and our lovely friends who are watching far and wide. Sarah is joining us in Melbourne, Australia, where it's already, is it midnight or is it 1am in the morning in, in Melbourne, Australia? How is Australia? Is it nice and warm at this time of the year? We would like to go anywhere. I mean, and at the moment it's freezing cold up here in, in County Durham and just out going out the front door is a bit of an adventure here in the UK at the moment. Hello to Alison, who is here in Hertfordshire. Uh, Sue is watching in Florida. Patty is with us in Michigan. Lynn in Essex is with us as well. And Cameron says, so excited, softer side is back. Yes, it's back with a vengeance. And we've got a brand new launch for you as well. I think this is really, really super cool because if you know the softer side shows, first of all, before we go anywhere, can I just tell you, that we have got a range of Rosen Hubble um, cotton fabrics on right now, solid colours with 20% savings. You guys have been going crazy for them before the show even started. We have had 11 sellouts already, so you want to go and shop the show straight away while you're listening and you're watching to what we're, uh, to, to what we're doing right now, but you want to grab those fabrics as quickly as you possibly can, just putting that out there straight away. Now, if you're a quilter, you're going to be in absolute heaven. In fact, actually, even if you're not a quilter, you might be even more likely to be a quilter when you see our brand new launch today, because these these are quilting border guides. Now, listen, I needed birdie, mer, burn, birdie, birdie. <laughs> Bernie, I needed you as my guide to talk to me about these guides. So as we have a look at them, because they're a brand new collection, would you talk me through what a guide will do for me? So, of course, I can do it. What it is, is if you're making a, a quilt or anything that you're going to be putting wadding in the middle of and a backing on, you've got a sandwich. So if you're going to put that in the washing machine or even hand wash it, if you don't secure those three layers, that wadding's going to come away. And really, whichever wadding you use, it's going to happen with. So what you do is you quilt the pieces together. So normally you can use a walking foot and do straight lines, or you can do free motion stitching if you get more experience at that. Ooh. But a lot of people are scared of that because they can't really do the pattern that they want to do. Me included, I sometimes struggle with free motion. So what we have here is our quilt and pattern guides are basically a guide that you're going to have your foot on your machine you're going to follow it around the edge of the acrylic to make patterns and those patterns are going to be accurate every time if i just show you this cushion and i've got this cushion here this is the heart design that we've got and you can see where it's going along the border here but then in the center we've also got that heart a sort of rotational pattern which is the same actual guide you're just using it in a different way and also as well this is made with that rose rose and hubble 
and it's oh, absolutely it's beautiful fantastic. beautiful colour, isn't it? Perfect, perfect for quilting as well. But I say, this is a cushion. So if people think straight away, well, patchwork quilting, I, I don't make quilts. So you don't need to, you can make a cushion. Oh, but I've got you, here. Will you show us one of the, just show us one of the guides so we can oh, physically see you. what one looks like and then actually um, what we do with it. Um, because I think once you see what this can do, because it's kind of like, it's kind of like a guided railroad almost, isn't it? It is. So I've got it, I've put it on the front of the cushion there, but actually I'll put it it's on the top invisible. there because you're going to see it better because it is transparent. It's a bit like, I know I was, I was describing them to you before the show wasn't doing it. I was saying it's a bit like your bathroom window. Yes. It's like opaque. Frosted. But what it's got on there, it's got an anti-slip technology. So when you start to use it, basically it's not going to slip on your fabric, but I'm going to use them shortly and you're going to see. But if I line that up, let me line it up there. There we go. We can see that the stitch line is exactly around. I move it up a little bit. There we go. The stitch line is around the guide here, and so, that's it's easier to see under the machine. Okay. When I demo it, it'll, so, it'll Bernie, make more can I sense. Be, can I just ask you a really, really basic starters question? So. I'm not drawing around this to make a shape because often we use stencils and templates, don't we, to draw around things and make shapes. This is actually for your sewing machine foot to make that shape by being sort of in the track. That's exactly it. So it's a bit, I suppose it's a bit like a, um, like a rail track. If Once you get your foot in there, it's not going to move. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get that accuracy every time. But some of them, when you come to see when I use them, you actually get a two in one, like the dual one. I've got the dual one here. This is one of my favourite ones. So you can see how it gets the name of the dual, the big shape around the outside. But can you see that inner part there? Mm -hmm. That's a secondary shape that you can actually use to make patterns as well. Ah. Ah. And you're getting grid lines here, so those black lines that you can see there, like a crosshair, yeah. that is printed on the actual border guide itself, not on the packaging. And what that does is it helps you line it up on your seams or on your, on your lines that you can draw on your fabric. I'm going to have the reference guide out later on, Derek. You, you'll not believe what you can do with the reference guide as well. Fabulous. I love it. Right, I tell you what, we're going to come straight back to you in just a second because I want to see some examples of what this can do. But let's introduce you to this brand new launch bundle as well. And let me tell you, getting the bundle on air has been no mean feat this morning. Let me tell you, producer Johnny has spent from the very second he got here this morning right the way through to about five minutes ago getting this bundle together because we were going to have them just individually but we wanted to put a nice bundle together for you as well. So with this, you get the geometric wave and I'm taking the, the geometric wave, Bernie, is this one here that I'm pointing to, yeah? Okay, so you've got the geometric wave, you've got the decorative petal, and I'm going to go with this one as the decorative petal. Uh, we've got the jewel, which you showed us just a moment ago, and we've got the heart. And we've all, also, it comes with a pair of magician's gloves as well, which I love. Now, they're called quilting gloves, and Bernie will explain why they're called quilting gloves and what we use them for and why they are so important uh, just a little bit later. Now, brilliant that we've got the savings on the screen for you as well, which is brilliant. So £54, $78, that is yours, making a lovely saving, actually. So it's a saving of over 20%. Now, they are available individually as well if you want to buy them as well because we also have them in a multi-buy. So there are four different um, quilting pattern guides there. And if you want to take them individually, you can do. They are $15.99 each or $22.95. But why not go for a multi-buy of two for just £28 or $40, which is really, really good. Oh, do you know what? Sorry. Housekeeping. I forgot in my opening shot because it was so exciting and we did it from over there and I got very nervous and I've never worked with Bernie before and any other excuse I can think of. I forgot to do some homework. Two things. First of all, want to hear from you in the comments today uh, because we love you anyway. Maybe this is your first softer side. I'm just looking at the comments right now. There's a few people joining us for a softer side for the very first time. You are going to love it. You're going to love our fabrics. You're going to love what Bernie can bring as well in terms of demonstration and inspiration as well because you do not need to be a mistress seamstress at all, let me tell you, to get into softer side. Um, so get interactive with us. There's another reason to do that as well because I've got two crafters companion vouchers to give away as well for either £20 or $20. Got two of those to give away during the show and I just need you to comment. Now I'll do one for YouTube and I'll do one for Facebook as well. So let us know. Let us know what you're up to right now. Are you in the middle of a Christmas <coughs> make? Are you in the middle of a New Year make? Have you got any Christmas makes that you've got pictures of? Because I would love to see them. And um, then uh, get involved of course on our YouTube and Facebook. But 
email us in pictures of what you're making for Christmas as well for softer side items. We'd love to see them. It's studio at crafterscompanion.co.uk. Is there anything else I was meant to tell you? Oh, yes, the raffle. The raffle, yes, because we need to get, we've got our last chances to get our tickets for the fabulous raffle. So you can win this amazing There Is Your Life in Craft bundle for just a £2 or a $3 ticket, which is brilliant. Buy two tickets, remember, and we will send you one of our Christmas stocking decorations for free. We are drawing that tomorrow on Creative Cravings, which is myself and Jan. Do I get to announce the winner? Oh, yes. Um, that's tomorrow. So we've literally got 24 hours and a bit <laughs> to get our tickets for. Right, OK, now let's talk fabric. Now, the Rose and Hubble fabrics that we've got. Can I move these, Adam, yeah? OK, the Rose and Hubble fabrics that we've got, I've just got a small selection of what we have here. There are, um, it must be the best part of 50 different colours, something like that, that we've got right now. 11 of those have sold out before the show even started. They've all got 20% savings. Um, so they're all by the half metre, and they've got a 20% savings. So usually they're £3.49 or $4.99. Now we're looking at £2.79 or $3.99. Now I know so many of you have already spotted um, the deals and the bargains. So let's go through some of the colours that we have got here. We have got the gorgeous, gorgeous amethyst, and amethyst is a softer purple. So it's not necessarily the darker, deeper crafter's companion purple, but amethyst is lovely. Oh, these fabrics are amazing. I am going to just give this one a little waft because I want you to know it's 100% cotton. It's a nice and stable quilting weight cotton, but you can use this for dressmaking as well. Um, it is a wonderful, wonderful washable fabric, of course. Um, I love them. The Rose and Hubble fabrics are just delicious. They are great to the touch as well. And I always think when you're going to work with a fabric, it's difficult when you're buying on the TV because you can't feel it. I can feel it on your behalf and it is amazing because, I mean, listen, I'm not a dressmaker at all. I don't work with fabric, but I've presented lots and lots of fabric over the last few years. If I don't like the feel of a fabric, even if I love the colour, I'll walk on. But these feel absolutely beautiful. Right, we've got lots and lots of other colours for you as well. What we're going to do is just show you on the website the selection that we've got. Now, the ones that will have little where the basket turns red, they will have sold out and gone already. But if you shop the show, there is a massive, massive selection. In fact, I'm going to go through the colours that we have got. We've got amethyst and apple and Baltic and bamboo and beige and biscuit and bottle and bright pink and brunette and cadet blue and candy blue and chambray and chartreuse and chocolate and copen, which is a blue, apparently. Uh, we're getting to it. We're, we're finding the fabrics right now. Here they come. So much in there. We've got chocolate and coral and corn yellow and cyan and dark grey and elephant and emerald and fur and fuchsia gold, tomato, ice cream, imperial. There are loads and loads and loads of, loads of fabrics to buy by the half metre right now. Now, the most important thing to remember, because a lot of you are brand new to this um, softer side today as well, is that we cut from the bolt for you. So if you order two half metres, we will send you one full metre. If you order four units, we will send you two metres as one length, which is brilliant. So we've got our own cutting room here at Crafters Companion, and we will do that for you as well. Let's say hello uh, to a few people. Um, Anne Kalinowskis, she says, uh, love the new sewing corner, Bernie. It's nice. Are you feeling at home already over there? I am. I love sewing corn, corner as well. A bit of a play on my name as well. Oh, sewing corner, corner, of course. I love it. There's so much room as well. And I just want to spread out. But obviously, I've got to keep it really tidy because it's new. <laughs> And I'll get into trouble if I make a mess of producer yeah. Johnny Warnay. Very, very tidy <laughs> so far. Uh, Cynthia says, two of my favourite crafters companion people, Derek and Bernie, are sure to have me in stitches today. Ta-da! Right, OK, shall we get started then? Because we've got loads and loads and loads to get through. Um, let's look through these quilting uh, border guides then. I'll stop clapping, sorry, because I know it makes a horrible noise when you're watching it on the telly, clapping. Um, let's go back to your border guides then. It's a five-piece collection. I love the fact that it comes with the quilting gloves as well, Bernie. If you haven't got those, it's very important to look after your fabric, isn't it, when you are quilting? You have to look after you. It is. And like you were saying before as well, Derek, this is a lovely fabric. I've got the test pieces I've got here for the pattern guides. These have actually been done by our Trisha and the team, and she's used the Imperial Rose and Hubble. So even when we do doing the, the prep work behind the scenes, we use this fabric a lot. And at that price, I mean, at 349 and a half metre, 
Yes. It's, it's a steal. But to have that 20% off today, Ridiculous. I'm hoping if there's any left when I get home, I might be able to do a little bit of shopping because I, mm. I love my solids. I have, I have a lot of plain fabric and I love my solids. So yes, so these quilt and pattern guides, I absolutely love them. We do call them borders because essentially that's what we were, our initial thought was that you're gonna use your bigger ones to fill your space if you're doing a quilt. And then when you're doing your borders, sometimes you might not want a big design in there, you want a smaller design. So we made the smaller design that would fit in, but as you can see, when I go through these, you can actually make them into bigger shapes. So if I line this one up here, so this one's the decorative wave, and this is what I was trying to do on the cushion before, but this actually shows you better. If I get the foot, so this is your um, ruler foot, so you've got a low shank or a high shank foot depending which type of machine you've got. This, I've got the low shank here because that's what our Gemini stitches. But if I hold this now in the channel on here, once obviously you've got your foot on the machine and what happens is, can you see how it just glides ah. around there like, like a train track? It's not going anywhere. You can't wobble because it's in that track. So that's, that's Bernie, how they work. Is everyone's low shank foot on everyone's machine, is it generally the same size, the circle bit at the bottom, or does it, does it differ? So what it is, it's the length of it. So on the machine, I don't know how, if we can see, on the machine here, where are your feet attached to your machine? That metal bar there, that vertical yeah. bar, that's the shank. So when you're, uh, most domestic machines uh -huh. uh, will be a low shank. Uh -huh. But there's an odd few machines, and if they're a, a, a really high, bigger high spec machine, or there we are. Um, it might be that it's a specialist like Benina and Juki machines, they often have their own foot. Uh -huh. um, so I've got a different machine at home, it does have its own foot. Um, but the universal ones will go on pretty much most machines. And to be fair, the majority will be low shank. You can contact your manufacturer. Um, and if you're really struggling to find out from your manufacturer, get in touch with our customer services, they'll get in touch with me and then I'll find out for you as well which one, which one you'll need. But I know we've got them on the show as well today. So once you've got your foot, you've got your foot sorted on your machine, you want to start doing some designs. I'm going to flick through with just a handful of these and then I'm going to do some sewing so you can see Fabulous. how we do it. This is all that decorative wave. So it's the same design. But can you see how different oh. they are from oh. using them? I mean, this one is just using half of the design. Yeah. Doing it that way. And then we've got a spiral. Oh, I like that. And this is the petal. So we're moving on to the petal, which is just this section here. Uh-huh. So but it's look, not just the one shape that it is, it's actually one shape that can, that can open up different yeah. possibilities. I mean, look at that. Imagine that all the way down the quilt. Beautiful. Just that separate apart all the way down and that's enough for you to have quilted your quilt. Yeah. And I'm just going, this is the jewel. Look at that. I mean, look at them. And that's the inner part. You were saying there's the inner part as well that you can use that inner part on it as well. And you're getting a circle there and you wouldn't think by using that jewel, you would get that design. And then we've got the heart. Bernie, do you remember Spirograph when we were kids? That's exactly it's, what it makes like, me think that's of. That's what this is, isn't it, for the sewing machine? I think yeah. that's awesome. I love that. Imagine doing a quilt for your Valentine. Yeah. And doing it with hearts all over it. Tempera. That'll be lovely, wouldn't it? Absolutely lovely. lovely. And then that is the heart one as well. But it's a spiral. So it just shows you how you... Once you start playing with them, we give you a few ideas on the um, packaging just to get you started. But then once you get a few um, ideas under your belt, you'll start playing about with it and get loads of other designs. So if you've got a machine with an extension table, pop the extension table on because you want to have a little bit of room. And if you haven't, pop, pop some books around just to get just to get it like a flat surface. Oh, is that a cheats way of getting an extension table? That's really clever. Because actually they can, they can sometimes, I mean, if you've already invested, you know, like a couple of thousand in your um, sewing machine right now, and then you suddenly change what you do with your sewing machine, then you think, okay, now I need an extension table. Sometimes that can be an extra two, three hundred pounds for some machines, can't it? It can, exactly. And I say you can, and usually they're not really generic. They will be per machine. Yeah. Um, but if anyone's got our... Gemini Stitch Pro and we're lucky you'd love to get it before they went out of stock. So I know everywhere is struggling with machines at the moment that it came with one. So get it out the box wow. and get it set up. So I've got my fabric here and then what I've got here is our reference guide. So this is a 13 inch square. 
Mm -hmm. And what it has, you can see that it's got grooves in it, if I put it the right way. It's got grooves in it that you can draw through. It's got a centre point, and it's also got all of your half, uh, quarter, it goes up in quarter inches all the way from two, all the way up. It marks 12 and a half, but then obviously you've got your last one, which is 13. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do, so when we were showing you those, all those designs before, you may have seen that there were some little chalk marks on there. And what that does is, if you're working on a plain piece of fabric, like Rose and Hubble, obviously. <laughs> I'm not sure which colour this one yeah, is. Not this for one's much longer, definitely... I wouldn't have thought, though, um, to this be honest, is... Bernie. They're going <laughs> so quickly. There we go. So I'm just going through, and I've got our heat erasable pens here, which are absolutely perfect for this. Or you can use if you've got a chalk pen. If you're just practising, just use a, any pen, but just make sure you're not using that on your good fabric if it's not your practice space. <laughs> Did I put my centre dot? Yes, and I put my centre dot in. So what that's done is it's given me a bit of a grid line just to start to work on. So I'm going to use this decorative wave. I love this one. Oh. And what I'm going to do is I'm, when I put it under my machine, I'm going to line it up so my starting point is in that dot in the centre. And then it's going to go all the way up and it's going to finish on that line and because I've got those lines on the actual guide as well yeah. can you see how I've got those lined yeah. up with my grid lines so there's taken all of the guesswork out of it then yes it does so we're going to take this to the machine now I'm getting my gloves out now oh. it's warm in here but I'm putting my gloves on now come on Bernie <laughs> it is Christmas so you've got to do a magic trick as well if you've got these gloves on you've got, got to do a, you've got to put oh. a rabbit or a dove out of somewhere I should some, have, somewhere during the show I should have done like I can do like a oh, there you go. <laughs> Love it. Love That's it. as far as I can go More with magic, magic later. tricks. <laughs> yeah, why do, okay, we, why do we have quilting gloves, though, um, Bernie? We're here till three o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> why, why do we have quilting gloves? So what they are is they've got little rubber tips on the end. Now, I know you're going to get close up on mine and you're going to see that they're not very clean on the ends, but that's because I've, I use these all the time absolutely all the time you can see there so they don't need to go in the wash and you can put them in the wash there's rubber tips on here on both sides so you, there isn't a left and right you can pick up and put any on i bought um, a pair a few years ago and it only has the tips on one side so i have to remember to put them on the right correct hands oh, that's clever isn't it I and what realize. it does it helps your grips i've got a little saying derek go on I've got a little saying so when you're doing any because this is technically free motion yeah because you're moving the machine yourself i've dropped my feed dogs at the back so it means that i'm moving this if i don't move the fabric there's nothing going to stitch right now when you've got the gloves on it's giving you extra grip so it's going to help you grip the ruler grip the fabric and make that move as one around your um, extension table in the bottom of your machine. So what you want is it to be slippy on the bottom, grippy on the top. Uh, okay. And that's, that's my little saying. So slippy right. on the bottom, grippy on the top. <laughs> the other top tip, have I got any here? See if I've got, oh, I have. Oh, I'm just knocking everything over. If you've got our stick away, and I'm sure there'll be some of that on the website, this cleans your stamps, it cleans... I use it to clean the base of my sewing machine. If I've been using stick and spray and it gets a bit, um, just a bit grubby. Mm. This also is, works as a very good smoothing agent and polish. So give you clean, your base of your machine, a bit of a clean with this, and then it'll make it even smoother for you to glide. Because what you want to do is glide, but you want to keep the guide with the fabric. So let's have a look. Let's get some sewing done, Derek, because I haven't done any sewing yet, have I? Right, so I'm lining those lines up with that grid. I'm starting off at that centre point. Um, remember to put your foot down, because sometimes it doesn't look like, it looks like your foot's down, but it isn't. And when you put your foot down, that sits in that channel perfectly. So you're going to do a few little stitches on the spot, and then you're going to just glide it round. And all I'm doing is I'm gently pushing down on the guide to the fabric so it's moving it at the same time i actually haven't got my fingers on the fabric because I'm, i've got the the space like the footprint if you like of the guide holds it in place so you're just going to work your way around and then when you come to a bit where you think oh i'm i'm on an angle there i'm on a bit awkward i'm not sure which way to go you leave your needle down you can turn it if you want to turn it you've got the lines so you can just ah, line it back, back up yes right yeah yep. 
got and you. then we're going to go all the way around there and we can see I'm just following it round and I've got to there so now I'm at that point there I'm going to think right well where do I want to go now so what you can do if you want to work that way you can go you can run it through I haven't broke my thread off I'm going to now go on an angle and make a different design so this is where you can just make it up I mean you can make it up as you go along yeah and it's um, just Bernie Patty on YouTube has just said, um, I, I want to try these, um, but I don't have a quilting machine. Mine is 40 years old. We'll have to think about getting a new one. But you don't need a quilting machine for these to, to work, do you? Well, she would need the foot. It would, it's the foot that's the key yeah. to be able to use these. So I would say if her machine has... Normally, it's if it's a machine that will take snap-on feet. So if, if a machine takes... Um, regular snap-on feet that you can buy now on you know anywhere you can buy snap-on feet if it takes those feet then i would i would try it because you probably is going to fit um i would say you could contact our customer services with your make and model of your machine and leave it with us and we can have a look and see if, if we can find out for you if you haven't bought any um other than that then yeah you would need to because if it's a so yeah it would depend on the machine well so, she yeah. says hers is 40 years old so it's uh, so it's been around the block a, a, a little while a bit around the block there you go there's another quilting <laughs> joke for you um yeah maybe after 40 40 years it is time maybe i say to treat yourself to be treated to a, a new sewing machine because sewing machines these days you can have the best of both worlds can't you bernie you can have a sewing machine that is a quilting machine. Yes, you can get special long arm quilting machines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But your basic machine now can be, you know, the, the best of everything, can't it? Oh, definitely. It's any machines. I mean, some machines are sold as quilting machines. Some are sold and they aimed more at dressmakers. It may just be what sort of feet come with that machine. But all machines do the same job as in stitching. A lot of them, you will, the feed dogs will drop, so it'll let you move and those little dogs aren't dragging it back underneath. Yeah. If you've got our original Gemini stitch, that's a manual machine, so the feed, feed dogs don't drop on there. What you do is you put your stitch to zero, and then they're not going to move. So you can still do it. So yeah, I would look at, look at the machine, like I say, have a look. If the manufacturer's still going as well, contact the manufacturer. Yeah. And I send them maybe a specialist foot that you can get for your machine. Um, it is definitely worth it. I'll show you especially if it's one of the big sewing machine manufacturers, most of them will, will um, now be creating kind of, even if it's a bit of a, you know, like a workaround for machines that are many, many generations um, old as well. There'll be a workaround, and I would, I would bet there'll be the right kind of foot out there somewhere. Again, it's difficult to answer directly because there are so many different sewing machines, like there are so many different people. There's lots of them out there. Um, right, where are we getting to now, Bernie? So I'm just going to show you this foot here. This is my, for the machine I've got at home, that's a different machine. That's, yeah. that's the specialist foot from the manufacturer. So you can get them, yeah. but they're just a different, a different guys, so you couldn't use the universal. So yeah, so definitely go in touch with your manufacturer. They're because very clever, it's very aren't they? They are, it's very addictive as well once you start playing. So I've got the design done here. I've just started one there and I've gone round, you know, and you can just work your way around and do as much as you want. I've got a quilt here that's got this um, decorative wave on. And I might have to lay this down just so you can get a good look at it. Our Alison in the team made this, and this is absolutely fabulous. I mean, look at that. And this is a double, a double row here of that pattern. Oh, yeah. All the way up. And it's been made as a feature. So we've used a different colour thread. So you could use the same colour thread, mm -hmm. and it blends in. And I would say as a beginner, if you are really scared of it, use a matching thread, because then it won't stand out as much if you aren't happy with a particular part of it. And then once you get more, you know, adventurous, you can then go for your coloured thread, variegated thread. Oh, my God. Oh, my word. And that if, would look amazing, wouldn't uh, do it? We, do we ever have that in, um, Bernie, here? I don't because, know if we've got any on the website. Right. We have sold it before. You, you Honestly, if you've never seen, and I've only seen the last couple of years, and I can't remember the... Um, uh, the I think it may have been an orophil back in the day, uh, a few years back, but variegated thread, which is exactly as it sounds, 
So as your thread goes through, it goes through lots and lots of different colours and changes automatically. Without you having to change the thread, it changes colour all the way through. It will change your life, people, won't it, Bernie? I've got some here, Derek. One of the team's done some with it. And they've got here, so this one goes from red to yellow. I'm not sure where, how, you, we're, we're, how well we're you can pick we're that up. We're coming for a super zoom, hang we're on. We're going to have a super zoom we're on it. Coming. So this goes from green to pink to yellow to orange and back to green again. And it's, it looks like a rainbow on the actual um, cone of thread. Oh, yeah, we're coming yeah, in. Yeah, we're going to have we, a lovely zoom in, Charlene. You can angle see. Angle it slightly up. There we go. So you can, you can see, see how it changes colour. the colour there. Look at that. And that's one thread. It's just one thread, yeah. But I say we did, we have sold it before. Um, but I have a search on the website and see if there was some there. And we did, we sold the Gutterman one that we Love had. Love it. But it's fantastic. Seriously, it's amazing. It is just brilliant. And it brings the most simple of projects massively to life. And of course, no one now else knows how you did it. People think that you must have done it all by hand using like two inch pieces of thread because how have you gone from a red to a yellow to an orange to a green? And no one but you know, it's just, it's just one thread and it goes on and on and on. It's absolutely brilliant. Really, really good. Um, listen, it's very, very busy for this already. I'm not surprised. Remind you, let's remind you of the shapes as well that we've got, as because this is a brand new launch. Now, you can buy them individually. You can buy them as a multi-buy um, as well. But the new bundle that we've got here is four of these fabulous guides, and they do far more than the obvious shape of the shape, if that makes sense. Plus, you get your pair of um, quilting gloves there as well. £54.78. There is a multi-buy on those as well, by the way. So you can buy them on their own. Each, I think they're £15.99 or $22.95. But we're doing two for £28 or $40, which is really, really cool. So you can have a, you can have a look. I mean, you've seen, you'll go back through the show, I know, afterwards, um, before, before our launch party. Uh, later on um, but when we do that you'll have the chance to go back and look at the examples that Bernie showed us earlier and all the different shapes that you can do because it's not just so for the petal one it's not just doing that shape that goes round goes out comes back in and goes round it's not just about that one shape alone it can create many journeys as well and listen we're calling these border um, these can go all over your quilt the, the border is predominantly where you might want more structured shapes do you know what I mean, for, for your quilt? But these could go absolutely everywhere because this is all about free motion, baby. This is all about going crazy and doing your own thing, painting your own world. Right, let's talk fabrics again. Um, I'm sure between the last time we spoke fabrics and this time, I'm sure we we're going to have, we, well, we, I know that we've had more sellouts because um, our, was it Sunshine? Sunshine has gone, Sapphire's gone, White's gone. We've got a Peacock sellout and Lime and Ivory and Claret and lots and lots of the um, colours have sold out and gone. The Baltic colour has gone. I'll just show a couple, of the, a couple that we've got here because um, they are just amazing. Um, the reason why everything's going so crazy on the fabrics right now, this is the Chartreuse. Um, the reason why it's going so crazy is look at the price. I mean, the regular price of these fabrics. And remember, bear in mind that, that one unit of this is a half, oh, oh, very clever sticking of the labels there, team, well done, very good. Um, <laughs> very good. Um, but one unit of that is half metre. I'm, I'm guessing this is going to be, is it 114 centimetres with Bernie offhand? 110? 110. So um, quilting weight, use this for dressmaking as well. The most amazing colours. I think everyone loves their solids because it's a bit like matting and layering when you're making cards, isn't it? Your solids really do all of the background speaking for you. And these are incredible colours as well. 100% cotton. Let me put the label back. We don't want to get told off for that later. Um, so you've got lots and lots of lovely colours. Let's pick another one. This one's quite nice. Oh, I wonder if this one's raspberry. Is that still in stock? Okay, so there is your raspberry, and these prices by the half metre, by the way, most fabrics that you buy even solid, even from what you would consider to be discount retailers, um, for the average half metre of fabric, you're usually looking at around about sort of five to seven pounds. Even it doesn't need to be a designer range at all, even for a solid. So even our regular price at three pounds 49 or four dollars 99 is really, really good, I have to tell you. But to discount that by another 20%, when we've got so many colours on offer as well, it's like 
like, hang on a minute, um, they're not even in the winter sale category. Um, this is just a special thing that we are doing right now for this softer side show as well, which is really, really good. Now, out of about the 50 or so colors, I didn't count every single one of them, we've sold out of at least, I would say probably, yeah, we're coming up to uh, 14, 15 of those colors have sold out and gone already. So what I would do, can we go to the web page quickly, just have a little scan through all of them, because there are, there's such a huge array of them, and I want you to grab them. Sorry, technical team are now going, oh, well, hang on a second. We'll do that in just a moment. When I say technical team, that's the technical team of one because Johnny's producing today. Uh, Johnny's not technical. Uh, <laughs> so what we're going to do is we'll take a little whiz through the fabrics. Oh, you can get rid of me. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> um, here come all the bits and pieces that we've got on the show, and here come the fabrics as well. So let's have a look at see what's still in stock. You've got your bamboo, Baltic. Oh, Baltic's just gone. Um, as well, you've got your biscuit, black's gone there, bottle, bright pink has sold out, there's brunette and there's, oh, what was that? What was that? What was that? Um, we've got coral, we've got corn, corn yellow's gone, unfortunately, copen has gone, it was a lovely deep blue. Um, we will try and get these back in stock. Um, can you just stop, Adam, for a second? Only because I want to point out, um, if there's a fabric, just go back up to one that's out of stock, um, Adam, that's got a red basket. Uh, there you go, the one on the left there, cream. So you see next to the red basket where it's out of stock. If you press the heart that's next to that, you'll be able to wish list it. So when it comes back into stock, if you're logged in, um, you'll be able to, Adam's not logged in at the moment, you'll be able to wish list it. So when it comes back in stock, we can just drop you an email and say, it's back and you can grab it there. <laughs> Brilliant, that all worked really well, didn't it? We, we, we're getting into the swing of this in our new studio. So we've got new studio, we've got new cameras, and we've got new technology. It's brilliant. I tell you what, and the, have you noticed how many amazing close-up shots that we can do? Especially that's especially good for you, Bernie, in the sewing machine as well, isn't it? Sometimes you you do need to see for for the detail on something because if you can't see it, you think, oh well, I, I can't really see it on there. And I know a lot of people don't like to buy online, Derek. Sometimes I look at something and think, oh, is that right? But I think the thing what. Oh, well, I know the thing what we can do is describe it like you were saying about the feel of the fabric yes. earlier. You know, you, you know, yours, we like personal shoppers for everyone, really, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> I'll have a little feel on your behalf. It's absolutely fine. No problem at all. That's what we're here for. Uh, Tansy Pansy on YouTube says, how many elf uniforms? Did, did I really say that? Sorry, can you say that at this time of the day? I don't know. Uh, Tansy Pansy says, how many elf uniforms does Derek have? Uh, and is there a hood on this one? I believe there is. Is there? Yes, there is a hood on this one. There's no ears on this one. I've just got a yellow bubble um, at the end. Um, Patricia says, morning, Derek and Bernie from Stone Mountain in Georgia. Absolutely love the oh. Christmas jumpers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, Enchanted Fairy on YouTube says, how did you join the stitching from squiggle to squiggle, Bernie? How do we do? Ah, so what you do is you leave your needle down and then move the guide ah. so you're not actually cutting your thread. So you can do a continuous oh, one. So you don't have to stop, really. So you, don't you go right the way stop, around no. your border. I mean, some designs you might want to stop. Yeah. If, if it's, you know, you say with the one that did like a spiral, it was one out, one out, one out. But if you're doing. Um, a continuous one you're not actually breaking your thread you can just carry on and carry on and carry on and get right the way through your project one of the things i hate is finishing off threads one of my pet hates <laughs> so these are perfect for me because i know i don't need to i don't need to break my thread i can just continue and you're wasting less thread as well because if you've got to keep stopping and starting every time you pull something out of your machine uh, you've got them few inches of maybe six inches of thread even yes. more on your top and bottom so I know it's not a lot but that does add up doesn't it over a project so you know so you're saving on thread as well brilliant right should we do a little deal shall we yes. let's do a little deal we like doing a little deal and you're loving what's on the show today I'm not at all surprised how would you like the most incredible and well thought out brilliant quilting dressmaking shape making ruler plus a full-on Big, oh, I don't want to say Big Daddy. We're not allowed to say Big Daddy these days, are we? Big Daddy, Big Mummy, Big... The, the business rotary cutter. 
This is one that you really want. And actually, don't think with rotary cutters, the bigger, the more dangerous, the more likely I am to make a mistake. No, <coughs> the bigger the rotary cutter you've got, the more in control of it you are, the stronger it is. And actually, remember, um, the rotary cutters have actually been built and designed ergonomically. So the blade stays away from you when you're not using it, but your hand is never anywhere near that blade at all. It's really, really good. Because actually sometimes when you have a very, very tiny um, rotary cutter, and sometimes you need smaller rotary cutters for more details, but when you've got one that's too small, actually you are more likely to have a little mishap with one that's too small than with one that is too big. Uh, big. And this one has been designed beautifully. 20% saving, buying the two together as a bundle on the show today, £35, $43. Um, why is a rotary, does the rotary cutter come, it comes with spare blades as well. That's very unusual, you know. Usually when you buy a rotary cutter, it comes with the blade that's in it, and that's it. You want more, you go buy more. Um, this comes with two spare as well, as part of this deal for £35 or $43 in the basket. Check it out straight away, I would. Um, it is important to have good ergonomics in a rotary cutter, Bernie, isn't it? Because you want to be as far away, really, from that blade as you can be. Yeah, definitely. The, the best thing that I like on this one is that you, well, there's a couple of things, really. The first one is I'm a left-hander. And people will get sick of me saying that because I'm a left-hander. Oh, me too. Oh, are you left-handed as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what, what that means for us is that when we test him, we test things left hand, right and right-handed so we know that it's it's going to work with this one you don't have to actually take the blade out to change it so from a left-handed i've got it in that hand if i was right-handed you just turn it over and you're in that hand the other thing is it's got that guard on it and you can't cut unless you take that guard off and it's just there next to your thumb and i find that that is really ergonomic for me mm -hmm. I mean, I'm doing that with my right hand as well. So it's not, you know, it's not too loose, but it's not too stiff. So if you have got dexterity issues, you're not going to have any problems. It also has um, sort of the ridges on here as well. So you've got that grip. So when you're holding it, like you say, it is it. You need to, you need to respect the rotary cutter. Yes. Um, because it is a sharp blade. And like you say, you're getting three blades in there. So you're getting the one that's in and then the extra two in the packet. The good thing about this is as well, if you've got our other rotary cutter um, that has the squishy handly one, you know, if you struggle to hold it that way, you can buy that one. These blades fit in there. If you've got, you know, our big fabric cutter, 15 by 15 and a half inch fabric cutter where the cutter's on the side and you up and down like that, these blades fit in there. So if you've got one of those, the blades will work in any of them. So whichever one blunts first, I mean, they do last a long time. Just don't go over pins. <laughs> Be careful with pins. <laughs> you can have tell you, I've, I've have done you been that there? before. <laughs> I've been there, yeah. I've been there, I've run over a pin. Tell us about this ruler then, Bernie, because I'm fascinated. You know, what's the difference it, it, between that ruler being able to fold and one that was, you know, d that didn't fold? Why, why is that a good thing? So. The one that doesn't fold is basically the same size as it. So it's a 12 and a half inch square. They'll all have the um, inch markings, half inch, quarter inch. Um, some will have an eighth of an inch marking on. But what we've done with this one is, as well as you've been able to do that, so you've got the 12 and a half inch square, you've got the grid. So if you're squaring up, say this is me quilt, this is me project. Mm -hmm. If you're squaring up a project, you've got all your lines to line it up and you've got it and you've got it, it's opened up and you can cut up and cut across and you've got your 90 degree angle. So that's your first use for it that you would use with an ordinary square one that doesn't fold. Mm -hmm. The reason why we've done the folding one is there's another design in um, the patchwork world, if you like, called flying geese and I'm actually going to bring this quilt in again so this was the quilt that I showed you that had that decorative wave design on ah. there's also this design here yeah. and this design here is called a flying geese unit so it's you've got your two little triangles on the side and then your one here so in effect it's your shape of flying geese as they fly like in a V formation right. and this is the sky and this you see here they just put together here in a column that is a very, very, very popular um, block that's used in patchwork. It's made up of what's called a half square triangle and a quarter square triangle. Again, really, really, really regular 
shapes. I mean, I use half square triangles all the time. That has to be my favourite shape of all shapes is a half square triangle. There's so much you can do with them, isn't there? There is, there is. And basically what we've done with this is once you fold it over, so you'll have noticed that it's two colours. So we've got pink on one side and we've got clear on the other side. Mm -hmm. If I fold it over and bring in the pink side on here, and the main ruler is black lines. So when you've got it open as a square, it's your black lines. When you turn it over, the white markings come to life. So we can see the white markings. Yeah. And what these are numbered is from the top, two, three, four, five, all the way down to 11. Mm -hmm. And then you've got your dashed lines along. And what this is going to do is help you cut those accurate shapes. Now, I'm going to get a bit of fabric. I think I'm going to use the paprika if we've still got the paprika in stock let's check it shall See if we we've got has it's it gone, gone? <gasps> right i'm not oh. going to use the paprika then i'm going to use the corn flour or corn yellow is it corn, corn yellow, yellow. It's called. have we got that one yep right let's use this one how close to selling out are you <laughs> though, producer johnny oh. we're all right at the moment but so, be quick yeah. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a strip of fabric. And the reason why, how I know what width to cut is, if, say, I want a two-inch half-square triangle, I know I need to cut a two-inch piece of fabric. If I want a three-inch, I'll cut a three-inch. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring in my ruler. Now, I know I've got a straight edge here because I cut this earlier. And then I'm going to bring this in and I've opened it again because I want to cut a two inch strip and I'm basically going along here. So I'm back to my black lines that I'm looking at and I'm just lining it up. And I'm going to get my rotary cutter, pop that on there. I've lined it up and then all you do is as soon as you take your rotary blade to cut, you, you take the cover off. There we go, all the way up. It just like slices through, but look at that, beautiful. So that there is cut through four layers of the Rose and Hubble, absolutely no problem at all. So I've got my two inches there. And then I'm saying, right, well, how do I now cut a two inch half square triangle? I'm gonna cut four at a time again. I'm gonna be a rebel, Derek, I'm gonna be a rebel. So, I'm going to line it up, and this time I've folded my ruler back up. I've lined, I'm now going with that two inch dash line. Let's we'll see, we've got that lined up. I can actually see better on the camera than, <laughs> than look. I don't want to put my head over because you'll see my, my ho ho ho. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to cut up that side, <laughs> and then I'm going to turn it around. And because, because I'm a lefty, I do my. I'll put it upside down like that. I'm going to line it back up and I'm going to cut it. Do you know they say that we're, we're more creative, Bernie? What else are we more? Are we, are we more intelligent as well, lefties, I think? I don't know. My granddad used to call me a cuddy wifter. A what? That a what? cuddy wifter. <laughs> I've never heard that. That's Being a left-handed, a northern, northern um, saying. Um, what, tell me again. Cuddy wifter. Hoodie. Hoodie. Cuddy. Cuddy with a C. Cuddy. Cuddy Wifter. Wifter? Yeah. <laughs> wow, I have never heard that ever. <laughs> so now there I've got my two inch half square triangles. Perfect. And what you can see, can you see there's some missing at the top here, Derek? Yes. So what we can show you at the top of here, if I turn it over, pop it on there, you can see that little bit there. What that's doing is cut, cut the dog ears off. So when you join them together and stitch them, which I'll quickly do. <laughs> You're going to put a quarter inch seam on there. Johnny's just, just had to put that, um, that Cuddy Wifter <laughs> into, uh, into a search engine. It is, it is a UK thing. So e e even me, because I come from the south of the UK originally, I'm now a surrogate northerner. <laughs> and uh, I had never heard that I? before. So I just, we just had to, uh, to check. That, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So you've got now your two inch square. Now, you're going to say, well, I can cut them with my dies, but you might not be a die cutter. You might not want to do it. You, the rulers help me do it. Now, I'm going to flip it over and just talk you through the other side. The other side, if I open it up, you can see the marks better. You've got now, we've gone to blue, 
numbers and blue lines and that's going to cut your quarter square triangles so in all of your designs if you do in, you don't have to do that flying geese unit that's just one of the ones you can make with it but what we've done is we've put together a chart and we're going to put the link in the comments as well for you to download this um chart for you to help you with these mm -hmm. and also i'll pop it in if you're not in Sawmouth crafters companion join the group and i'll post this later on today as well so you've got the link and what this is it's giving you all of the measurements that you can do so we've got this is the half square triangles and then there's a little chart of i've got it starting on one page Apolo apologies for my uh, printing off i should have lined it up and it's saying if you want if you want a three inch this, you know, that's what you'd cut, that's what you'd get. Yep. And then your quarter inch ones, you've got a little chart. Oh. And then this is your flying geese unit. So I say you've got that quarter square triangle and then you've got the half square triangles. And then again, you've got this little chart here. So we are going to put that online for you to have a look at so you can get those measurements. But I just want to quickly show you something that I've already stitched out. Because I want to show you, Derek, the largest, from the smallest one you can make, to the largest one with this and if you can think of think of all the possibilities now here that's the smallest half square triangle block you can make Aww. isn't that cute and, and how big is so that one so cute that two inch so square? that one is um two inches unfinished yeah. so when you've stitched it it'll be one and a half inches yeah. for your seam allowance so Aww. that's the thing yep. the biggest one oh wow is finished at 11 that's 11 inches Gosh, so that's your big. biggest one but actually you could cut round the whole the outside. shape. Yeah. We've gone down to the bottom line there, but you could actually go down to the outside line as well and make it even bigger. So that's your half square triangle. And then your quarter square triangle. So that's the smallest quarter square triangle that you can make, which is, what size was that? A three inch square. Uh -huh. And then look at this for comparison. That's the biggest. Oh my gosh. Now that's a whole block really with the isn't same, it, if you want exactly it to be. that's the front of a cushion isn't it mm. with if i pop that there you'll see there we go there's your difference <laughs> and that's just with that one ruler i love it see? do you know with those two fabrics that you've used there bernie just looking on that shot it, it almost looks like the grandest pair of curtains that have been gathered is in the it? center it looked really really super stylish this was some of our liberty fabric what we had in stock oh, and i know it's it all sold. A bit liberty i didn't like yeah, to say but it's all sold out yeah. now and then look here is the little dinky and the large flying geese unit and if i just bring that quilt back in as well you can see that that was that Beautiful. was the little unit I've got here, but then yeah. that's the biggest one you can make, and that's the little dinky smallest one you can. I'm going. To, I, I want. I want to change the chart to say the dinky size, not the little dinky, size. Dinky, yeah. <laughs> not the little size, but that just gives you, like I say, but it's for your regular cutting as well. So your squares, your rectangles, your strips. Yeah. Um. I say I cut that without no issue at all, and I cut through four layers. I'm going to quickly show you just how good I trust this trust oh there's my notes gone flying across the <laughs> studio <laughs> i'm going to cut a three inch strip this time this time derek i'm going i folded this so i've got eight layers of fabric ready eight. one pass straight through now and do that's, we, that's the power of a rotary cutter now do we need one of our our special threaders cutting mats as well really because you because you don't want to be doing this on a nice you know like our brand new table here i wouldn't want to be rotary cutting straight onto that in fact it would be my one way out of here wouldn't it it would be one, one way passport out the door by cutting directly onto this yes we've got this one i'm using here is the um a1 or we've got the a2 mat as well Ooh, i think i've got so, some of these I, I, I think I've got, got some got down one, here. Jerry, Hang on. Jerry's got one. Mm, got just one. A moment, well, the please. A1 folds three ways. Oh, so gosh, it's massive. Fold down, so if you are going anywhere or you want to move it and um, fold it up for storage. Look, look at this, got everyone. Oh, look. Derek's hiding. Derek's hiding behind his mat. <laughs> Hello. It's huge. Hello, look. It's huge. It's huge. Now, I, I know I'm not exactly, you know, like big, but uh, what can I put next to it that will kind of put it in. Uh, in context what size is this one? Oh, actually but there you go and so that is so a1 is oh so is that twice a 
Twice mm -hmm. here two, so it's 35 two, yeah. inches by 23 inches. That's huge. So if I pop that down on the table for a second, you see the, the good thing about having these new tables as well is that they are huge um, here. So of course this will level out for you um, as you're using it as well. Um, but that is a big, big surface area. And I noticed all of your, your angle lines are there as well. So your 45 degree angle and your 60 degree angle. Like, oh, have I got an overhead camera? Oh, how amazing. Um, uh, <laughs> um, there we go, look, there it is. So that's absolutely huge. So for instance, if I, if I just put, well, let's put my, that's, the, that's an iPad. So that shows you, in comparison to an iPad, other tablets are available. Um, the A1 is a UK and EU um, only one, but we do also have an A2 as well. Now, of course, the A1 will be, twice A2. Derek's worked that out by himself, uh, which is brilliant. So that actually folds in half the A1, just like so. Uh, sorry, the A2. So let me take the A1 away and then we can... There we go. There's no A2 in Bristol. A2's in Kent, Adam. Adam's trying to talk about motorways in the UK and there's we do have a road called the A2, but it's down in Kent. Anyway, and the A1, which comes right past Newton Aycliffe. Um, so that is the A2. Price is brilliant as well, by the way, because the, the benefit, can I get this? I'll get this out of the packaging. Tracy won't mind. Tracy won't mind if I get this out. She's lovely like that. The, the, the great thing about self-healing mats is that you can cut into them again and again and again. And what happens is when you cut into them with your rotary cutter, I'm just trying to straighten this up. There you go. Um, so when you cut into this with your rotary cutter, it's almost like the cut that you just left behind just closes back up again. It's, it's mad. It's crazy. It's really, really good. So that one is $29.99 or $29.95. Right. Now, you know how the song went, it ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it. That's what gets results. Um, now, Bernie's just shown you with the folding ruler how you can um, cut all of those um, shapes and those blocks, like the flying geese and the half square triangles and the quarter square triangles, <coughs> et cetera, et cetera. There's also a builder block way of doing it, which uses dies, which is really, really clever. So we've got a nice little bundle here, which will cut your half square, your quarter square, square triangles, and your squares as well. Um, we will do them, oh, we're gonna do them individual. Sorry, we don't have a bundle on this one, so you can choose which shape you want to go with. Let's do squares first, sorry. That's good though, considering with a die, remember you can just do it over and over and over and over and over again. And how many layers of, let's talk the Rose and Hubble fabric, because we've got it on the show today, uh, Bernie. But how many layers would to do with my what? Six? At least six, but you can cut more. I, I'll That's regularly awesome. cut eight at a time, to be fair, but we recommend six, and then it depends on, on your fabric. Right. On now, listen, fabric. I've never used these before, so I'm the perfect guinea pig for something like this because I've got a Gemini, so I'm there for die cutting. I've never die cut fabric. These die cut fabric, so I can go through six layers, but what kind of sandwich combination do I need to be using? Do I need to buy special plates? What, what, what's, what's the deal? No, so when you buy your Gemini, you're going to get all the plates in there for whatever you're going to do. So if it's your paper craft and your embossing or your um, multimedia dies, which is one these ones are, so you're going to use your clear cutting plate, yeah. then the metal shim, yeah. and then you'd put your fabric, then you'd put your die facing down, then your plastic shim, and then your other clear. And that's that's the sandwich. So the cutting yeah. plate, so the cutting plate towards the metal plate. Or the other way around. So you're cutting into the metal. So into if you think you've got your dye, yeah. your fabric is your ham in the sandwich. Yeah. And then your metal is your other slice of bread. So you've got metal in the middle and then you two a clear what to her. Two clear plates either side of that. It's like a double sandwich, really, isn't it? That's brilliant. <laughs> and I tell you what, in this in this one kit here, so this will do, it won't just do one size of square, as you can see, it's a bit like having nesting dies, isn't it? Um, so you go up in size. So you go from, oh, my eyes aren't as good as they used to be, um, 1.5 inches up to a four and a half. And there are one, two, three, four, five different sizes there. So if you think, actually, I don't know how accurate I'm going to be with a rotary cutter or with scissors or with the way that you've doing it before, then actually that is phenomenal because you know the blocks that you can make just out of those dies, even if you think, okay, I've got a sewing machine, but I don't consider myself a quilter yet. Get the dies, get the fabric, then you can have a go. 
That would even be good and would work for your hand sewing as well. So if you wanted to hand sew just one or two blocks together to start with, this would be a great way to start, wouldn't it? Um, right, let's go next for your half square triangles. Now the half square triangles were, yeah, it's these that make, that make this kind of um, block that you can see on here, which is not necessarily the best to see from farther, far away, but that's what that will do for you. Again, there are one, two, one, two, three, four, five different sizes. Again, keys in with the square as well. So it's going from a one and a half up to a four and a half inch square. So these are absolutely match made in heaven with the different shapes as well. So if you're getting the different shapes together, then you've got the same graduation in size going up for your blocks. That is genius. Of course, it makes sense if you think about it, doesn't it? You want to make everything that will coordinate with each other. And then we've got the quarter square <coughs> triangles, which is this one. And again, I'm guessing it's going to do exactly the same without even looking at the box. It's going to go from one and a half inches up to four and a half inches. And it's all going to be in simple die form. Now, I have to say, Bernie, um, the one thing that's ever stopped me from quilting is all of the, ooh, measuring, lining, ooh, all feels a bit technical. I have a Gemini, I have fabric, I have, I don't want to call it a shortcut, but I want to call it a genius. These are brilliant. That's the thing, we've, we've done all the thinking, we've taken all of that and done all of that for you, so that once you, all you're going to do is decide on your design, which, oh, there's so many to choose from. We give you loads of free ones online as well. If you go on our main build a block product on the page, there's a link on there that'll take you in to get another, I think it's another 60 free patterns online, but there's, there's hundreds and thousands of designs that you can do just with these three shapes alone. And what, because we've thought about that and taken that away from you, that you don't have to worry about it, you can cut your fabric out and start sewing because that's where everyone enjoys it. I mean, I don't, I actually enjoy cutting out, I must admit, but I do prefer to be sitting there sewing. But if you think, oh, I've got loads of cutting out to do, with this, you're cutting at least six shapes at a time, but actually you're not because you can put more than one shape on that plate through your Gemini as well. So you're not just cutting six at a time. You could be cutting 24, 30, 36 oh, yeah. at a time of your different sizes as of course well. You can, so you yeah. could double cut a project. Yeah. You could cut for one project and cut for another one at the same time and just pop them in a little bag. Obviously make yourself a little storage bag because you can with your fabric and then keep it in there for another day as well. So it is, it's good that you don't have to think about the numbers because it does put a lot of people off and the angles and the geometry, which oh, I've got to admit though, I love it. I, I, I am a maths girl, <laughs> I am. <laughs> so if you're designing it, and what Bernie's saying there is if, if you are trying to design a quilt, so even if that is made up of, you know, existing blocks, if you want to design a quilt, and as Bernie says, there are thousands of quilt designs and block designs that are out there, you can end up designing your own quilt as well. But that does involve a lot of maths, doesn't it, Bernie? It does when you have to sit and work it out. And then if you want to put a border on, I'm just going to show you this um, little table when I have in. How fabulous is this? I mean, obviously Aww. it's a Christmas as well. Cute. Now that's made with the builder block. But when you look at it, you think, well, hang on a minute. That isn't a square or a triangle in the middle. That I, I can't even think what shape it is. Let me pop it down so you can, I'm going to draw my finger around so you can see. I don't know what shape that is. It's like a, uh, I don't know what shape that is, is. Like a rock but that die is not in there, is it's it? It's like a diamond shape, isn't it? It's almost? a sort it's like of. Like a long dime, a crystal. <clears throat> so that shape isn't in there, so you're going to say, well, you haven't done that with this. Well, we have, because what's happened is we've cut out the square, and then we've cut out two triangles, sewed them on the end, and flipped them back, which is called, it's a technique called snowballing. You're snowballing your corners. And that then, you've got a totally different shape oh. when all you did was start out with a square and two triangles. Yeah. So, you know, once you start playing around with things, you're going to be able to do it. And then, like I say, you, you're going to try and work out, oh, well, how would I work that out if I was going to cut them shapes out? Or even if I had a ruler, but I don't know where to start because I haven't got them. With these, it's just so easy because you, the, the sizes are already there. You just know I need, oh, I need my four and a half inch die. Oh, there it is, put it through and you know you've got them. You don't need to check because the accuracy is there and every 
piece is going to be cut accurately every single time, which is what I love because although I do like what we're cutting, sometimes I do go to cut and then, you know, you'll get distracted or you slip or the mm. cat comes in and runs in front of my legs, which one of them's a nightmare for doing. He, I'm sure he can work out how to open my sort room door. And then you slip and then it's, you've wasted your fabric because you've gone off as well. With this, you don't really, you're not going to have that issue because that die is going to cut. The cat can't move the die once it's in the machine. <laughs> yeah. Um, let, me, let me just very, very quickly, I just want to share with you some of the comments that are coming in about these because you might have looked at the folding ruler earlier and the a rotary cutter and you might be. There's one comment here that stuck out in my mind and, and do you know what? I think it's the same for me as well. Laura May on Facebook, I think, sums up really nicely how I was feeling, saying, cutting is the part of sewing that keeps me from sewing more. This removes the barrier. And that is so, so true. Um, Cameron says on Facebook, love that all the math and corner cutting is covered in the dies. Less room for error um, when I don't have to do the math. Um, Susan says, um, Susan Rushton, hello, lovely Susan, says, it sounds like you really have simplified the quilt making process. I may have to try my hand at it. There's lots of people saying that as well. Um, Laurie on YouTube says, I hadn't seen builder blocks before. They are so cool. Um, Tonya is asking whether the pattern is online. I wonder if she's talking about the one with the little the little table runner there. Is that is that around somewhere, Bernie, that one? Well, funny you should say that, Derek. I shall, I did one similar and I wrote the pattern. I brought it. I must have known that you were going Ooh, to ask. Mind reader. So, I actually designed this block using the Builder Block expansion pack and I put the square in the middle, half square triangles here and then quarter square triangles here so it's all three sets and I've actually, there is a download online for you to get it, again I'll pop it in our Sewing with Crafters companion group um, later on today after I get home, it'll be after tea. After tea, after dinner. After tea. We call it tea. <laughs> uh, we call it tea. Do you call it dinner, Derry? We're no, not, not afternoon tea. Uh, what's, no, not afternoon what's that tea. group called? And why, why am I not? Tell me, tell me what this group is called again. So it's Sewing with Crafters Companion. Sewing with Crafters Companion. Yeah, I didn't so we, know about that group oh, until right in, now. I need to be in there. Yeah, we've got, um, there's, there's over 6,000 members in now. There might be over 6,500 actually. Fabulous. There's definitely over 6,000. So if you, if you join that group, um, there's a couple of questions you answer, you know, like when you join a group and whatnot. Yeah. And then I'll post this and I'll put it on my page as well. So I'm Bernie Corner Crafters Companion. Yeah. So if you follow me as well, I'll put it on both. So if you, if you can't find the group, you, you can go on that one. And you'll get the pattern to make this read. So then this is going to end up a 12 and a half inch square. And I know it's a 12 and a half inch square because I can check it with my folding ruler. I know it's going to be right. Uh -huh. Join three of them together and then put a backing on and then you've got your table runner. Or put three uh -huh. like on top of each other for a wall hanging. Oh, I love it. So yeah. See, that's, can I just say, there's one other thing about quilting and you might come to Softer Side of Life because you love Crafters TV and you watch everything that we do. You get to Softer Side and you think, do you know what, I'll watch it because I love Crafters Companion and I love you know, all the fun and everything else that we have but I'm not a quilter because everyone thinks in their mind and I almost wish they wouldn't call it quilting in a way because quilting always makes you think of that great big thing that goes right the way across the top of the bed. No, that's not quilting. Quilting is actually the stitching that you do by making your sandwich. So fabric layer, wadding layer, fabric layer. It's the stitching to put it all together that is called the quilting. So it doesn't have to be a quilt. It can be a little, it can be a little coffee coaster. It can be a table runner. It can be a cushion cover. It can be so many different things. It can be something the size of your hand and it can be something the size of the room. So never let that, it can be a bag. Of course it can be a bag. It's one of the biggest uses of quilting is actually to make your own bags because then you have, to, you have to make what? Two, three, four blocks and you're done. That's the joy of it. And imagine having those dies as well. They're going to make that process even simpler. And if you're already with us at Crafters Companion, you've already got a Gemini Junior or you've already got a full size Gemini. So all you need are the dies and the fabric. Funnily enough, we've got both. We've got both on the show for you right now. So you can get started which I think is amazing. Right, what else can we what else can we do with all of this then, Bernie? So I'm I'm still on the Christmas theme. Go on. Derek, so look at this. Oh, I love it. Isn't this fabulous? 
So Maxine, our design team, made this and she's inspired me for my next demo. So what I'm going to do, we can see that little tree. If I just bring that in yeah. here, we've got the little tree here. Now, this is a six and a half inch block. Yeah. And this is using the one and a half inch sizes from the expansion expansion pack set so yeah. it, from all three we've used a mixture yeah. of them so this inspired me and i thought oh well hang on if you can make that shape with the one and a half inch ones yes. what will it look like if we use the biggest ones at four and a half well let's oh. find out so let's we? find out yes brilliant so here we go so i'm going to make a tree and i'm actually going to turn it into a wall hanging Nice, yes. just in time for Christmas because there's just only what exactly. four. Exactly. Is it four well, days to go? Oh no, it's less than that now, isn't it? Oh, I'm proper in the Christmas uh, spirit now. I'm supposed to break sleeps, up tomorrow, it? but I think it might be today if I get everything done. I might be a bit of a rebel. <laughs> Finish uh. today. <laughs> right, I'm just getting my plates. Oh, sorted. are you breaking up for Christmas today, Bernie? Mm, it's supposed oh, to yeah. be tomorrow, but if I get everything done tonight, oh. I'm, I'm going to finish. Uh, have you, early. have you done the mad super do, supermarket dash yet? Um, I've got that to do tomorrow, but I only Ooh. need a few bits. Oh, yeah. lucky you. Yeah, don't It'll need take too you a much. little bit longer than it normally does. I'm just going to warn you right now. I, know. I had that joy yesterday. I know. My nephew works in a supermarket, and I found out yesterday he's working Christmas Eve, 11 o'clock till 8 o'clock. Ooh, that's well, harsh. Oh, God that's, love them. God love yeah, those people him. that do that. So I just want to show these dies to do. We can all, obviously, I've got mine with the packaging off. And what happens is if I turn these over, you can see they're not falling out. So the good thing about our Builder Block series, we always give you it in this um, storage, this housing. It has a lovely velvety, very luxurious, got a lovely velvety. One. And because I've got daft nails, I just use my scissors to get them out. So I don't want to break my nails. <laughs> Got lovely nails there. and I'm just taking them out and the reason why is you've got there's like a little lip here and that's going to hold your die in place so you're not going to lose them uh -huh. so I know I know I've got quite a lot of dies at home that have uh, paper craft dies I don't really do any paper craft but I've got some paper craft dies and they are loose and I've got them in like a box and and I never know where they are whereas with these what you're going to have is you're going to have them all in the cases and then stand them up on your unit or your shelf wherever you keep them mm. and you've got it all written on the side and they're just going to look great like you know when you go in a library and you see all the books all together all Very lined organized, up perfectly yeah, yeah. it's going to look like that a proper library of all <laughs> of your dies so you know exactly which one you want um, and you can go you know, straight to it. that's a really, it. really, really good idea because, you know, I, I'm just thinking right now of Christine Mahoney, who might well be at work right now, I don't know. Um, Susan can tell me later. Um, all With all the paper pads, with all the ink pads, with all the markers, all nice, neatly in the rows, in the craft area. Um, now you can do it with your builder blocks as well, which is really, really good. That's a really good way of, of not losing them. Now, one thing I just wanted to quickly address as your... Um, cutting into the metal plate there and that left in the back of my mind oh what happens when you get to the second time around or the third time around because if if that was card obviously then going through you're going to leave the impression back on new card of the old shapes but with fabric you don't get that same kind of transference of shapes so if you're underneath where your square is right now if you cut some more triangles underneath that afterwards you're not going to you're not going to have any any lines on your fabric that shouldn't be there so you may get lines on your fabric, but they're just going to iron away. Yeah, so any marks yeah. that are on yeah. there, it's just going to iron away. And the one thing I would say is, um, as you'll hear um, all of the team um, say, is whenever you're die cutting, once you've put them through and you're putting them through again, flip and rotate your plates. Because yeah. these are your consumables, your, your plates. So, you know, at some point you will need to replace them. But if you flip and rotate them as much as you can and use, you know, use them as much as you can, then, you know, they will last you a while. Would you so, get yourself a separate metal plate just for fabric? Brilliant. If you're going to be using these a lot? Brilliant idea. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I do have a set of plates at home that I keep for if I do do a minimal amount of paper crafting yeah I do have a separate set at home Brilliant. so that I know that they're going to always be for my paper and then the rest of them are obviously fabric because I cut fabric more than more than paper so we can see here right I'm um, look at this Derek I'm lining up I've got on here 
I've got squares. I've got four and a half inch square. I've got the four and a half inch half square triangle. Mm -hmm. And I've got the four and a half inch quarter square triangle. When you look at it, you're going to go, well, hang on. How is that four and a half inches? Because that's four and a half inches. It looks tiny. Yeah. But what happens is it's, it's worded how you make a square. So two of these will make one of them. Four of them will make one of them. Yeah. So you're all going to go back to the four and a half inch square. So that's how that's how patchwork works. And also as well, when you were saying earlier on about quilting, Derek, yeah. um, in America, the whole everything is called quilting, even the patchwork. Um, in the UK, we call this, or is it the other way around? Actually, we'll have to ask the viewers to let us know which way around. It's either over here in America, one way is everything's quilting, and at the other way, this is called patchwork, and then the quilting's separate. Oh, I see, right. And yes. I'm I can't remember which way around it is. I well, think our in America, friends will it's all fill quilting. us in. Our friends will fill we, us in. We have a lot of friends over, over watching, haven't we? So hopefully they'll be able we to. We have to we let have. us know but yeah i think there's there's a bit of a a split but to be honest i just call it quilting now bernie um laura may on facebook has said it's called an expansion pack is there a base kit that you need for it to work or is the gemini all of that i need so i could buy just this on its own could i so there isn't a, there isn't a base on what it is so the the story behind the name of these ones is originally we brought out the builder block system which was from one and a half inches up to six and a half inches of your um, build about So your squares, your half square triangles and your quarter square triangles. So then what we did was we thought, well, there's a couple of reasons. For one, people may not want to go for the whole system. They may only want the half square triangles. If anyone can only go for one of these, I would definitely recommend the half square triangles because this one, this has got to be my favourite shape. Um, if you can only go for one. If the set obviously will work more together. Mm -hmm. The other thing was, is we've got the accuracy there, we've got the speed, but what about if you can go faster? So the reason for the expansion was, right, well, if you've got two of those, and two ah. of those, and two of those, yes. you can cut double at the same time twice as, quick. as well. The reason why we didn't put the six and a half inch in is because you couldn't get both six and a half inch on at the same time through mm -hmm. the Gemini on mm -hmm. A4. So we took it up to the four and a half and obviously then the price point reflected that. Yeah. Um, but that was the whole sort of through it. So if you've got the original one, this is brilliant because you're then going to be double cutting. You're going to be cutting even faster. Yeah. I've got, I should have brought the quilt in. I've got a quilt, um, I've left it next door. That I made when these when we brought the first builder block system out, and I used the three and a half inch square, and I just did different colours, and I just made a design with the colours on the quilt. It's a single bed quilt, so it's quite a size. I cut out, I think it was two hundred and eighty-eight squares in eighteen minutes. Wowzers! With one die, eighteen minutes. I just stood there, doo -doo -doo, went through. Doo -doo -doo. I didn't. I probably did sing. To be fair. <laughs> <laughs> And 18 minutes. So if you've got the original builder block and you then get a set of these, nine minutes. Nine but, minutes but, to cut a quilt but also, out. <laughs> Bernie, I have to I have to say conversely, if you like a lot of people, and we you know, we are talking about a lot of people are dipping their toe in the water and going, oh well, you know what, I've got a sewing machine and I do know what to do with it, but I've never thought about quilting because it always feels like, you know, it's too big a mountain to climb, you know, from from zero to hero, that's like a huge mountain. Do you know what I mean? But actually, when you build, when you when you break that down into smaller shapes, which make smaller blocks, which make smaller projects, like table runner, handbag front, cushion front, you kind of think, oh, hang on a second, why aren't I doing that? I've got the machine that will do it. Here are the dies that can make me the expert. Hang on, I'm I'm, I'm getting onto something here. Um, so actually, these are perfect for that, Bernie, aren't they? They are because like you see you can start small and also if you just make some blocks so if you just make a few of a few of the blocks and then add those blocks all together to make a big quilt if you yeah. want to make it into a quilt um memory quilts i've made quite a few of those oh, um with um baby's clothes yeah um and children's clothes um also you know if you just want 
if you just want a little project to do, you think, oh, well, I'll make a couple of blocks this afternoon, pop them in a box, and then one day you might want to make a quilt, yeah. or just put a backing on it, and you've got a cushion, or like you say, a bag, it's not going to be, um, it's, it, the project's as big as you want it to be, really, and it's just having that time to, to play <laughs> and think, and if you have got a machine, so obviously we're coming up between Christmas and New Year, a lot of people are not going to be at work as well, so dust that machine off and have a little bit of a play. And do you know what? If you've gone and joined the Sewing and Crafters Companion Group, if you get stuck on anything, pop a message in there and you can guarantee that if I'm not about, if Lizzie's not about, what someone in there who's in there will come back to you quickly with a solution for you to help you. And it, it, I think what happens is, is you need you, if you need your confidence building up, having other people saying, oh, that happened to me as well. And, you know, it's not you. It hasn't, it's not something you've done wrong. Or oh, try it this way and see what it's like. And you'll soon find that your confidence will build up. And then before you know it, you'll be making bags and giving them to your friends or you'd be going out and say oh where did you get that bag from mm. oh I made it because that's just the brilliant thing where someone asks you where you got something from and it's something you've made yourself it's just amazing so remind us for the shapes that you cut out there because we're making a big tree here right? I mean I'm fascinated yes I, so you you had two sets of larger squares and then a smaller square set of triangles didn't you yes so I had these have and I'd already cut some in advance because I knew I'd be jabbering on and I thought I'll not get ev everything done. Hey, it's Christmas party, who cares? Because I, I, I can talk, Derek, you know. Oh, oh, well, I, I don't I know if anyone pre warned you of that. <laughs> I love it. That's what these shows should be about. Good old right. chat, but we're learning something at the same time. I love shows like this because now, it's great. And so, you know how we said we've run out of the fabric, some of the fabrics? Yes, lots this of them. This one here, I ran out of the fabric and I needed some squares, but I'd actually cut too many half square triangles, so I just sewed them together because it gives me a square. I wanted a four and a half inch square and it's given yeah. me it. So oh, I thought, well, yeah. I'll just sew them together. There we go. Clever, clever. I don't need to, um, yeah. I don't need to do it. So all you're going to do is place these down. Now, um, I will put the requirements of this on the group but I know it definitely won't be today <laughs> but if I say tomorrow I'll pop it on the group what you need to cut for these but you can watch back I mean I've cut actually I can go through it can and we can because these show I forget the shows stay on forever don't they forever Derek? So, in a day right right so here we go then so you need three green four and a half inch squares or whatever colour you want. Mm -hmm. You want six half, four and a half inch half square triangle of green and of cream. So we'll put them on. So that's we've got our base. And then for along the bottom, I've got a red one, because I didn't have any brown. So I've got a red one for his stump. <laughs> and then it's tree stump. Tree stump. Trunk. It's a tree stump, trunk. isn't it? Oh, yeah, trunk. <laughs> <laughs> a stump is what left is left if That's you chop it down. Left behind when it's chopped. <laughs> I was thinking, I'm right there. I'm it's sure I'm right. It's still alive at the moment. And then a couple of little <laughs> cream ones at the top. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do with these shortly. I've got two little squares. I'll put them there. Oh, yeah. And then what we want to do is make the little bit at the top. So to make the top of the tree. Oh, where's my little... I don't think the top has a special name, does it? Has it not got it? <laughs> no, I don't think so. We'll just call it the... Uh, what would you call it? Top, wouldn't you? Yeah, the, the tree top. top. Yeah. Underneath the I mean, you could tops. do it like a gold colour. Oh, that cornflower. If you got that cornflower, you could do it the gold, couldn't you? So there we go. So I've got it all laid out there. And Lovely. as if by magic... Oh, did you do one earlier? Here's one oh, I did earlier. Oh, look at this. So there we go. So you've got your quarter square triangles are there. And yeah. if you do get stuck, just drop a message on and I'll, I'll pick it up. So I'm going to disrupt that now. Are you ready? I'm going to move it all. You'll be able to go back later and take a get. snapshot of yes. it. Yes. I'll ruin the shot. There we go. So there, we've stitched it all together. And we've got our tree. See, you know what? Bernie as well and and I'm sure we probably had some at some stage but you know you can buy panels for advent calendars and everything else and I'm just saying actually you've got a cheeky little way with a tree like that of being able to make your own advent calendar 
might be too late for this year because most of the most of the doors are open now aren't they all the chocolate has flown out uh, but for next year you might be thinking that's not a bad idea because it's very very simple to make your little um you know your little doors your little pockets that'd be good wouldn't it so what are we doing now are you backing yours that, yeah i'm backing it so what i've done is i've got some of my fabric here and i've got some wadding on the outside and what i'll do i won't stitch it now but i'm gonna you'd have it all right sides together you're gonna sew all the way around but you know when i had these other two pieces of squares these two squares yeah. i'm just gonna quickly sew this and show you so these i'm gonna make um putting a couple of little strap uh, like hanging loops on the top uh-huh so i'm just sewing right sides together quarter inch seam oh so you can put a pole through it or you can you know attach it in some yeah way. or put a bit yeah. of string on yeah so you turn it through so you've got like a just like a tube and you'd give it a good press, but I'll, you'll get the gist of it. So once you've got it turned through, come on, there we go. I always fold it so I've got the seam in the middle, mm -hmm. like that, and then fold it over so you've, you've lost your seam inside, mm -hmm. okay? And then all I would do is then, if I bring this down so you can see the top, and then pop it in there like that on your inside, and do the same with the other one and just do it equal apart and then sew all the way around and leave a gap down one of the sides and when you turn it through you've got your hanging loops through the top so what i'll do is i'll finish that off and i'll post a picture of it online once i've once i've got it all finished off i love it and then you can see it but yeah if i put it around to the tree again just just how easy was that and we cut we we can cut those out in one two passes on the machine You've got all of that cut out and your hanging loops as well. Oh, do you know what you've just put in my mind, Bernie, to finish that off? In the, I don't know if it's still there, but in the winter sale um, on the shop, the show, there is, what is it? Is it a die, is it, that cuts the little flower? There's yes, a, what so is it's it called, like a Johnny? Spiral. Something blooms, isn't it? It's the rose, it's the rose, isn't it? So it's like a spiral. And it's like a it's like a flat die, yeah. And then you put it on your felt's the best thing that it works with, or faux leather. And you pop your die onto it, and when it cuts it, and you'd lift it up, it'd be, it's like a long spiral um, of it. Can you Once you then start rolling it together, ta. So you can see there how it's like a spiral, and it cuts it into that shape. So when you well, then can wrap it round, and you can see the finished flower on there. Do you know what I'm? Do you know what I'm thinking? I've got the finished flowers here. Have a look at this. So you've got the finished flowers here, not not the petally ones. These these ones, very very tight ones. If you made those, Bernie, in Christmas colours, they could be Christmas baubles for your Christmas tree that you've just made. Brilliant Couldn't idea. They? Oh yes, and then you can just glue them idea. back on um, with a bit with a hot glue, hot glue gun, do you think? Or you yeah, could you stitch could them. You yeah, could do a little bit on. of stitching, couldn't you? Or the fabric glue. Yeah. Um because the Clal fabric glue is just like immense and I stick all sorts with my yeah, fabric it's glue. Because <laughs> it's just a wall hanging, you're not wearing it or anything like that, are you? So no. you could do it with the hot glue if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Um but you know get it stitched oh now if you get it stitched you can get some little fancy beads as well as some seed beads and you could add some sparkle to it as well couldn't you oh my word and if it was felt you could probably go over that with your clear overlay pen sparkle pens couldn't you and make it sparkly oh i love it right okay so let's talk about those hang on let's talk here they are. Here I am back again. Let's talk about these three options that we've got. So let's start with the square, shall we? Because now we've all got so many reasons to have these dies. I mean, we've just got to have these dies now, haven't we? Even if you are a dyed in the wool <coughs> paper crafter and you're looking at this right now going, hang on a second, is it really as simple as that? And will that, those dies really go through six or even eight layers of fabric in one go and allow me to put blocks together with different coloured fabrics like this? Absolutely yes, yes and yes is the answer. Um, and even though these are called expansion packs, by the way, um, you don't need a primary pack to then add this to. These are a complement to the original Builder Block set. 
which is incredible. It'll cut you five different size squares. They are multimedia dies as well. All I would say maybe is get yourself a metal shim for your Gemini machine, a uh, metal plate, sorry, should I say, for your Gemini machine that you dedicate to fabric because you'll use this again and again and again. So that's your square one, £26.99, $40.45. Then we have the half square triangle version, which again, five different sizes ranging from one and a half inch up to four and a half inches as well, which is really, really cool and very, very versatile um, as well. So you can see we've got all of the different and it does all of the math for you as well. Must remember to say math in here in the UK for our friends uh, across the pond because we would say maths and you would say math um, but it does all of that math for you so it takes off those corners that you are not going to need it gets it right first time for you it is foolproof which is brilliant because I'm such a fool I love it right let's do the quarter sp uh, square triangle um, set which <laughs> which is this one I am the Christmas fool um, £26.99, $40.45, and this will be the quarter square triangle. So just having those three together, so the quarter square triangle, the half square triangle, and the square is going to give you thousands, probably infinitesimal amounts of combinations of quilting blocks and shapes and projects that you could do and um, remember when we say quilting we don't always just mean full-size quilt for the bed because most people would go no wouldn't they they would say give me a little pencil case project oh yeah i'll have a go at that first and then build your confidence but that gives you a major head start right time to show oh time to show you some fabric well, the fabric that I've got left, because I had loads and loads and loads, we've now had 16 sellouts, uh, a lot of which happened before the show even started. In fact, I'm going to have to take you straight to the website uh, because that's where the um, fabrics that we have left are so difficult to keep track of because we had something like 50 recently back in stock fabrics, Birdie, as well, these were they? Yes, they only just came back in. I've never seen so many fabrics available all on one show. And then what we do is we discount them by 20% and they go straight back out of the door again. Surprise, surprise. Um, it's a 20% discount. Um, if any of those have got the red basket symbol and they're out of stock, do wish list them because I'm sure we'll get them back in the future. I can't guarantee that we'll get the same great saving in the future, but you know Crafter's Companion always has a little deal up its sleeve always. So grab those now. I mean, the price per half metre there, £2.79 or $3.99. It's quite honestly ridiculous for fabric. I'm not allowed to say it's a giveaway because there is a prize, uh, price there. But to be honest, it's not far off giving it away at that kind of price tag, let me tell you. Um, because obviously, as you can imagine, when you're buying fabric, you need to buy a huge, as a company like us. Um, luckily, we've got so many of you shopping with us but we have a big buying capacity and that means we do need to buy an awful lot to be able to achieve those savings. Now, I think this is such a lovely association. Crafters Companion have teamed up with the team from the Quilters Guild and I think this is absolutely wonderful because the Quilters Guild is a uh, collective of quilt enthusiasts. They're, um, they're almost quilt historians, to be honest with you, and the Quilters Guild are amazing because they will... Um, They'll find a way of reinvigorating quilt blocks that might have otherwise have been forgotten. Now, what we've got here for you is a um, 14-piece die collection, which is three block die sets. The first one is called the Kaleidoscope Wheel. Now, the block is this. So it's that hexagon there in the, in the quarter and these almost sort of like tumblers that go around the outside. And all of these quilt blocks take their inspiration from a quilt long ago. And there's lots more information on the back of the um, packaging as well, by the way. So this one takes its inspiration from a quilt called the Wheels Quilt, which dates back to somewhere between 1880 and 1900. I think these are amazing. In fact, while your shot is there, I'm going to show you the other two because there are two other blocks that we have which again will take their inspiration from. I mean, isn't that wild and crazy? Now this quilt is um, called a geom geometric wool table cover, which again goes back to 18, does that say 18, 1860 to 1890. Now, can you imagine, because that looks so modern and funky, doesn't it? 
you kind of think, do you know what? I'd love a rug like that in my front room right now. I'd love a pair of curtains like that in the bedroom, just or a blind. That would be amazing. And this goes back to as far as 1860 as a quilt design. And I'll show you that block in just a second. But while we're going into the history of the quilts, let me show you the third one. Now, the third block is called the coxcomb applique. And coxcomb is two things, actually. It's a flower. I never knew until I first saw these. Um, and it's also, you know when a, um, when a chicken, a male chicken, has a bit of a wobbly bit there, doesn't he? And it's red. You know what I mean? And that's called a cox comb, apparently. Although they don't have hair, which is a bit bizarre. They have feathers. Anyway, so here is using the cox comb block, which you can see is that lovely sort of thistly like flower, um, is a um, cox comb quilt, which dates back between 1870 <coughs> and 1890. It's incredible. I, 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 know, I mean, I know, I, I know people who are associated with the Quilters Guild, and it is a wonderful collective. Um, because it, it's kind of like, it's like bringing yesterday to life in a brand new way. So this set of dies will create these three amazing, amazing, very historic quilt blocks as well. So it's a really nice opportunity. Now, I think you can buy them individually as well if you want to, but we've got a really nice over 20% saving to get all three of those very, very historic quilt, historic quilt blocks in this one deal here. £69.83. Right, okay, let's go straight to, and actually, do you know what? I think you have got, out of all of the designs, actually one that you can do most with, um, you're gonna be demonstrating with the Cox comb, but you're gonna give us a couple of examples of the others as well, Bernie. I am, yeah, I've got the kaleidoscope one here. So you see, you've, you're taking it from all those years ago, bringing them bang up to date, making a little clutch bag, or look at this bag while Angela's made is absolutely fabulous and it's just using that same design using that inspiration from the Quilters Guild and we we are really really honoured to be working with the Quilters Guild because not many people sort of it, it, it doesn't happen to many people. No, they don't put their names to just anything, do they? No, I mean, no. we were allowed... I mean, unfortunately, I, I, don't, I don't know if any of the team went. I, I didn't go, but we were allowed to look at what was in the museum and choose the designs, what we would like to do to put into... bring them right up to date and put them into a set of dies. But also what we've done as well is we've put patterns in there. So as well as you getting the die set, you're going to get three different designs to start you off. Um, to make, you know, to make different items. So that one's the kaleidoscope. So I'll just pop that one to the side. Do you know the other thing about this, um, having this as well, Bernie, is going back to your previous point about the, um, the Builder Block expansion kit, is because your dies will go through several layers of fabric, if you're thinking, I'm not quite sure what is the right colour combination to go with, you can go with multiple and cut them all at once and then piece them together and go, oh, actually, it wasn't that colour and that colour that I thought, but because I cut out four at the same time, it's actually that colour and that colour. And actually, I'm going to turn those round and make that look different. So you've got so many choices, haven't you? Exactly. And also, the other thing is, if you've got some of our quilting clips, if you haven't, get some in your basket. Mm. Because what you can do is all those pieces that you don't use, Clip those together, pop a little label on, put them in a little bag and keep them for another project because you might put some pink ones and think, well, actually, I'd, like you say, oh, I don't, they don't go with that now, but they'll go with another project. I've got here, this is the geometric bloom. I mean, that, oh, this is the Rosenhubble fabric. Look at it. Beautiful. It is absolutely stunning. I think this really does showcase the design really well as well, but having that solid colour when you've got a design like this, really, really packs a punch, doesn't it? Um, I know we've got the cornflower in there, we've got the black, we've got one of the greys, and we've got the orange in there, but I just think it's absolutely amazing. Now, re redesign it, and you're gonna, you can get something like this. This is the same die set. Oh, now I love that. Totally different, isn't it? Love it. Absolutely, totally different. I, I'm going to move back a bit so I can actually see what I'm talking about. To me, it looks a little bit like a jigsaw. Yes, it does. Doesn't it, where the circles are? That is the same die set. So it just shows how you can make it go from that traditional style yeah. right the way up to 
you know, to the modern day. And again, depending on the fabrics that you're using, if you're using, you know, soft, delicate fabrics and then put a really dark plane next to it to make it pop, you know, you're going to get all of those different effects. And then the last one we've got is the coxcomb one, which is the one I'm going to demo today because I really, I do like a plique. Now, where's my... I'm on a bag theme today, so we've got another bag as well. <laughs> I mean, look at that, just on the side of a bag. So if I turn it round, we've got plain on the back, but you could definitely do it double-sided as well, or do one of the other designs, or, you know, change it up a little bit. Well, you don't look like a lady from 1880. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that not, looks not so Not in fresh. me ho-ho-ho headband. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, isn't it great? Love it. I'm actually going to, I've got the quilt behind me. I'm just going to grab the quilt. Hang on, let me get it. Look at this. Isn't that good? Isn't I've it good got to have array. all that space behind you now? I've got an as array well. of quilts here, but this one here. So this is the one. This is the one that's on the front of the packaging. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lay it out. I mean, in all its glory, look at it. Beautiful. It is just absolutely stunning. It looks painted, doesn't it? It does. And again, it's now this one is this is the jade, and this one is the paprika, which I think is gone, hasn't it? I think it? paprika's gone. Oh, both gone. Paprika's jade gone as well. Mm. So you couldn't whip us up another in a couple of colours yeah. we've got, <laughs> could you, Bernie? <laughs> Get the supplier to send another bolt of fabric in and we'll let Yeah. <laughs> but it just shows you how, you know, you've got the projects in there to make this quilt as well, mm. but also to make a little um, placemat and a little cutlery a little cutlery napkin oh, holder that's as well. Sweet. So you're getting all of these designs in here in the little booklet. Oh yeah, show For us what back, you get with it. So, you, so those last three I've showed you there in yeah. this one, you're getting the pattern to make in here. So we've got that quilt, we've got the bag, Which and we've got the placemat as well. We are at the book. And if we look, if we see in the book, in the front of the leaflet, you've got a little bit more information yeah. um, about the um, original one from 1870 to 1890. That's yeah. when they um, judging when it was made. Yeah. And that will have all been hand sewn as well. Now, I think the first, the first domestic machine was um, Singer in 1851 brought the first um, sewing machine out, but they didn't go into households no. till a lot longer after that. So a lot of these quilts will have been um, hand stitched and also um, people would have used um, bits of blanket, bits of clothing. Mm. They would have, you you know, re upcycled. So like we recycle and upcycle now, that's what happened then as well. And there's been a big resurgence on that, hasn't there? Now a lot of people are into the upcycling and things. Whereas if you think, you know, if you're making um, something and you, I'll be honest, I was once making, it was one of my first quilts I ever made and it's owls on branches. And I had no brown material. So I cut up a top. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? I cut up the top. I didn't wear it. I thought, oh, I won't wear that. So I cut it up because I wanted the fabric. Yeah. And I thought, well, I'm going to, I'm not going to wear the top anymore. Um, but obviously not. It's got a big strip quite out of it. <laughs> 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 but it's now in that quilt and I've still got that quilt as well. Yeah. It's got no quilting on it though. I need to quilt it because I've laid it all up. It's got yeah. owls on branches. It's, yeah, that's a plique here as well. That was Lovely. really good. So that's what used to happen as well. So this is where the inspirations come from. And we, you know, we wanted, we've been wanting to work with the Quilters Guild for so long. Um, and, you know, they were really happy with what we went back and presented to them, said this is, you know, what we'd like to do. But we've given you all the details in here. So you how to create your block, your, block, your cutting tips, how to cut against the grain, which I'll show you when I put them on um, the plate, how, what, why that's important all your sizing for your blocks, how much fabric you need. And then you've got the pattern. So you've got how, exactly how many pieces you're going to cut for that whole quilt mm -hmm. for the little table set that I showed you there as well. And then the tote bag as well. You're getting all those instructions in there to make those three patterns as well. Fabulous. So, and then again, you can then just go on and decide. So I'm going to then play make my own design up, like that one I showed you with the geometric bloom, make your own design up and just go wild, really. Just that get your fabric brilliant. out, cut it, and then like you say, Derek, put, play about with your, your um, fabrics and your colours to see what you're happy with, and then pop the rest away for another project. 
Love it. Now, are you gonna, are you gonna have a little go at this one? Are you, are you gonna I show am, us yes. this one? I'm, I'm just gonna put my quilt back right, up. Right, okay, I'll, I'll read some comments in the meantime then, because there's loads and loads of you um, uh, getting in touch. Uh, here's another one, it, another, it's funny, isn't it? We're all, I know it's like, what, what are we, two, three days to Christmas, whenever it was, but we've, we've all had a lot more time to think about what's around us. And I think today's show's been a bit of a revelation, hasn't it? Because all of us who are diehard Crafters TV viewers who are paper crafters, who are now looking at this show, because you don't like to miss any shows whatsoever, but thinking, oh, I could be doing all of that, and all I need is, it's dies. It's the same principle as when I, when I card make. Here's Lynn. Lynn says, I'm much more of a paper crafter, but since lockdown, I've used my sewing machine more and more, and I've been adding to my sewing tools and materials, so who knows what the new year will bring? That's the thing, you've just got to have a go, haven't you? Uh, Lion Teen One, AKA Sue on YouTube. Uh, took your advice, Bernie, and got the half square dies. Well done, congratulations. Robin says, love the contemporary quilts. And Mary on Facebook says, I started quilting by making lap quilts. That size is not so overwhelming um, as, a, as a large quilt. And I think that's, yeah, that's the thing to do, isn't it? I mean, listen, you don't even need to start with a lap quilt. You can make a pencil case to start with, do you know what I mean? get yourself in there, get yourself into your stride, because once you get that one successful project, and do you know what, it's the first time someone else says, oh, I like that, where did you buy that? And that's the moment, that's that light bulb moment. It's the same with the card making. First time someone sees a card that you've made and said, oh, would you please tell me which store you bought that from, because I'd love to get one. And you can say, my store, right here, I did it. And that's the big thing, isn't it? Massive, massive achievement. And when you're proud of it, that's it, sky's the limit for you. Right, where are we, Bernie? It's a fabulous feeling, that. Yeah. It, it really is. Um, I went, once went to a quilt show and I had a bag and someone um, asked me where I got it from and I, I was thrilled to bits. Yeah. Because I just, I was like, yeah, I made that. Yeah. And it's where people recognise People recognise what you make. And I know, obviously, we come on here and, you know, tell you guys, but it's the same with us as well. You know, it, we all, like, really quite humbled in that what we, what we do. I mean, we share our love of crafting with everyone out there. Um, and we love hearing. That's why I love the interaction on our shows and all the comments. It's fab that people are watching and learning as well. Um, and then treating themselves because you know you've showed them and think well actually yeah I want to do that I want to give it a go you know I want I want to learn so I'm cutting out my pieces so I've got uh, the midnight I don't know if we've still got the midnight in stock so I've got the midnight which Just. is a this is a oh, I don't I don't want to say French navy like a really rich navy it probably may look black on the screen but it's a beautiful rich navy and then I've got the cornflower that I know is Oh, is that still got that maybe hanging on? And then the paprika. But the other one you could use is a tomato. The tomato is a similar colour as well um, that you could use. But I'm just going to go for it and decide what, what shapes I'm, I'm going to cut out. What, what, now, have you, what have you stuck onto your fabric, um, Bernie? It looks like so, paper. Yes. So, thank you, Derek. I, I, I knew I'd missed something. out. <laughs> Derek's keeping me right today. Well, uh, well I'm just looking right. at it and I'm thinking a lot of people are thinking, <laughs> hang on a minute, a do, do I need a paper shim for my fabrics? What's that? Yes. So, what I've got on here is heat and bond. So, this is an adhesive that you're ironing on. Now, we do have some on the website, but this is the heat and bond light, which I think we've actually sold out of because right. I was going to treat myself to some more so I think it's gone but you can get the um, ultra which is in the red packet the heat and bond light is a orange color or uh, not orange sorry purple dark purple color mm -hmm. um, and the ultra is the red the ultra you can't saw through it would gum up your machine it's a it's a, a fusible adhesive so what it's going to do is stick your fabric to your fabric once you iron it so but it has like a paper coating so i've ironed that on and i don't know if you can oh yes you can see the shine there yeah, and yeah. see the glue so that's not tacky or anything until i put heat from the other side and then it'll reactivate it and glue it to my ah, fabric one side okay. so that's you to applique it down right so i keep my paper on so i've got applique ones on there i'm actually going to cut some out um of ordinary fabric as well just so you can see that it'll cut at the same time. So you don't have to have your, the same thickness. So here I've got four layers of fabric and four layers of um, the heat and bond on the back. 
But this one, I've got three layers of fabric. So the, that's the good thing about the Gemini. The Gemini knows that there's uneven heights there and it'll still cut them absolutely fine. So I'm just deciding which bits I'm going to have. I think I'm going to have them little bits as yellow. And I say, it's totally up to you. You can decide which, which part you have. I'm going to have those bits as black. And then I'm going to have... So the reason um, the, the reason um, Bernie was explaining that as well is because this is slightly different, this one, in so much as it's a plique, so it's not like we're cutting the shape bigger than we need it to be because we need to sewing allowance to sew it smaller. These are going to be... Um, these are going to go straight onto the fabric, so they're exactly the right size now, Bernie, for when they go on. Yes. Yeah, so it's going to cut them out as applique shapes. And what applique means is layering up. So you're going to have your um, back and fabric, whatever you're going to put it onto. Um, and then you're going to layer your pieces up to make your pattern. So if I pop these through, so I say in here, I've got some fabric under here as well. I'm pushing it a bit, Derek. I've got seven layers of fabric <laughs> and four layers of heat and bond. So we'll give it a go. Oh, well, listen, I'm confident it's the Gemini. <laughs> the the Gemini rotated, can do anything. I've rotated my plates as well. I've been good. Very good. Being good. I do forget. I do forget. <laughs> well, as well, I mean, I picked up a trick from one of our viewers, actually, in terms of your plates as well, even your normal cutting plates when you're doing paper craft dies as well. If yours are a little bit, some are like that and some are like that, and you put it together and you think, oh, I'm going to have to sit on that to get it through. Every now and again, when you're not using your machine, just put all of your plates together and put your Gemini machine on top of it. Just leave it. It flattens the plates out. I mean, you have to leave it there long enough, obviously, like overnight or, you know, a day or so or whatever. But it works! And I couldn't believe that worked, and it did every time, Bernie. I'm going to have to try that. Right, let's, let's see what happens here. So if I take these ones off, well, no bother. Absolutely no bother. Because yep. what you would do is count that paper as an extra layer of fabric. So we say up to six layers of fabric. I've got eight there, really. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because of my fabric and my yeah. paper. Yeah. This one was the same thickness. Take Straight them through. bits out. Straight and through. keep all these bits. So, where you've got this on, you can use them with little dies. You can get another yeah. cut out there and not waste it. I can you like imagine trying to anything. fussy cut that kind of shape? You know, that, that one that you've just put to one side, the oh, yellow one. Because so, it's almost like a moustache shape yeah. a little bit, isn't it? I wouldn't even attempt to try and no cut way. them by hand. You'd have frays all over the place. You could only ever cut one at a time, couldn't you? I'm going to turn this over and see what happens. Why was I worried? Look at that. Awesome. Just absolutely perfect. And that, well, maybe shouldn't have gone through all them layers, but it did. <laughs> it's gone through six, four, five, seven layers of fabric and yeah. four layers of that paper and the glue. So it just shows you the pressure of the Gemini. Um, obviously, these dies will work with um, other die cut machines that will take the multimedia plate. So these are like... They'll be, um, they sometimes get called deep dish dies. Um, there's different names, different names for them. Um, but you, they will go through uh, other machines. Right, so if I get a piece of fabric, let me lose one of me. Dies. So I've got, the, I've got the pale pink, is it the pale pink? I don't know if this is still there. Uh, I doubt it, Bernie. If this is I still doubt about... whether that's available. <laughs> <laughs> now, it could I want, be nude, actually. I want a 12 and a half inch square. So I'm going to get my ruler. Oh, if it's nude, we've got it. If it's pale pink, we haven't. <laughs> yeah, it's pale pink. Okay. I, I don't think I've got a big enough piece of the other one, so I'll use this one. It'll stand, it'll make, the pieces will stand out on it though, and it'll see, you'll see what it is. So I want a 12 and a half inch, I've used the my folding ruler. The reason why I haven't got the bottom here, because this is my selvage. So you don't really want to sew on your selvage. So your selvage um, is where it's laid on the frame when it's been made. Um, do you want a little bit of um, useless info Debbie. plenty of it it's christmas so, uh, you know the phrase tenter hooks if you're on tenter yes. hooks yeah yeah, yeah yeah so i found out where that came from on the frame when your fabrics put on both sides yeah if you look at you and you i don't even know if you'll be able to see it but there's little holes in your fabric in your seam oh, in yeah, your yeah, selvage yeah, yeah. Every, yeah that's knows where that. it's been put on they called the tenter hooks on the end and it's it's right at the edge and are they of real the frame? hooks? So the, say, the phrase, you're on tenterhooks, means you're on the edge 
Like, you know, and you, ah. that's where it comes from. Wow. Yeah, I, I learned it on some that's, TV programs. That's, <laughs> that's good. I want to know good, more now. I'm, I'm going to YouTube later, yeah. after all the shows, how fabrics are made so you can actually see so the tent hooks the, as well. That's so good. all I did there was just turn it round and I've got a perfect 12 and a half. Well, I've got two to be fair because I cut two out. So I'm just going to quickly grab my ironing board. Yeah, I've got all my samples Have down you got here. Baby I've got one some down tidying there. up to do today. I've come in the new studio and I've made a right, uh, a right mess. There we go. So I've got my piece there and I've got my iron on. So I'll just iron that crease out of there. And with a play kit, what you're going to do now is you're going to decide where you're going to put your pieces. Now, what you could do is I could take my pattern and use that for inspiration. Another top tip as well, when you've got this paper on the back of here, try not to get it from the outside unless it's a little bit loose. Because what you could do is free your edges uh -huh. if, it's, if it's not loose. Just score it lightly with a pin and then pop the pin under and that lifts it off. Oh, clever. And you've got your pieces there. And then I've got, oh no, that one's, they're one of the ones that aren't ironed, but obviously you've still got them. You could use, actually I'll use my stick and spray for that. I think we'll have a black one. So I've got my stick and spray, which is definitely on the website. My favorite spray, everyone knows Derek. I don't know if you know. Yeah. I better I'll, tell I've you in heard. case you don't. I've heard about this it. This is my favourite spray. Everyone's so, got their thing here, haven't they? I love There's it. Debbie with her chunky glue and Craig with his foam pads. And you so this is a temporary, spray. yeah, this is a temporary spray. So what it's going to do is just let you put it down there and obviously you're going to um, stitch it down, but it'll hold it in place while you stitch it down. Uh -huh. And then you're just going to go along and I'll just put a couple on. Have I got that one glued? Oh, I've gone a bit dark here, look. Oh, by the way, I've got um, the, the winners to announce in just a moment because um, two people are going to be winning, one from YouTube, one from Facebook, either £20 or $20 to spend with us here at Crafters Companion oh. just because it's Christmas. Um, we have picked a winner, so I'll announce the those in just uh, a second, um, which is good. I love that. That looks really cool, I've just it? I've just gone random because I know we don't have a lot of time. It's like so a little I've cool dude with a blonde hairstyle, it isn't do, it? Yeah, he's a lot. So all you're doing then is you're just going to iron it down. And what that heat's doing is releasing that glue and sticking it down. So that now is temporary. Obviously, this one I use the second spray, so that will peel away when you need it to. Yeah. <coughs> oh, excuse me. That's all right, Tony. Um, and then you can then take that to the machine and stitch it, and then just keep building it up. So I like to put some on and stitch it, and then, you know, just build it up. So what you're going to do then, if I grab my samples again... I've got a couple of quick questions for you as well, Bernie, in just a second. We can see then how you can then build it up awesome. and then stitch around. So with this one, we've done like a blanket stitch around there just to secure those pieces down. If you use the ultra heating bond, which is the red packet, you actually don't stitch that down. You can just iron them on and then they'll stay on forever because it, it's heat sealed. Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> you just swallowed a fibre or something, haven't you? Bless you. Um, right, OK. So I have got a couple, I've got a couple of questions um, for you. For you. Uh, actually, I'll do the winners first, Bernie, while you uh, get yourself back together. And then uh, <laughs> that happens all the time on fabric shows, by the way. Only happens on fabric shows because there's fibres flying around all over the place. You always end up right at the end of what you're saying. One just little flies in and then that's it. Right. OK, got two winners for you. Let's go to Facebook first and say congratulations, Laura May. Uh, who has said the dies are perfect for my hands. I love the basic shape. She was talking about the um, Builder Block expansion packs, I think. Um, and from YouTube, congratulations, Laurie Andy, uh, who said, I hadn't seen the Builder Blocks before. These are so cool. If both of you could just drop me a quick email to prizes at crafterscompanion.com um, with your 
well, in the case of YouTube, usually we need your your um, your real name and your account details so we can credit your accounts uh, with twenty pounds or twenty dollars. Right, couple of quick questions, Bernie, before we go. First of all, we had. Hang on, let's see. Uh, Donna on YouTube says, when you were talking about feet on the sewing machine earlier, did you say roller foot or ruler foot? Ah, uh, so it's the ruler foot. Ruler. Um, I may have put it away now. Don't worry, my darling, so I think she just oh, wanted to yeah, know, did I hear right? A, ro a roller foot's a different type of foot that has like a roller on it. It's a bit like a steamroller. Uh -huh. And it, it p helps put, so if you've got like heavy duty um, fabric or slippy fabric, it'll help guide that through. Right. But it's definitely the ruler. That's probably my accent, Donna. I do apologise. No, you've got a lovely <laughs> accent. Never apologise for being you, Bernie. It's beautiful. Uh, so it's the ruler foot. Uh, that you'll need Donna uh, for that and Sharon says would the satin stitch cover the edges completely and I, I assume we're talking back to the cot's comb satin stitch is perfect and that's the one I like to do yeah on my machine I like to set it about three and a half inch three to three and a half inch 3.5 mil <laughs> wide and maybe about 0.3 long so if you've got an electronic machine you'll understand those settings and that's it's a very it's a it's quite a narrow one but very fine and your machine does go slow so be prepared to feel as if your machine's not moving anywhere but it's doing it but i do like a, a lovely satin stitch because i think that does finish it off really nicely thank you darling um sarah in uh melbourne says derek thanks for the tip on the gemini plates i've just gone to do it crafters tv you learn so much i learned from one of you so it's happy i'm happy to pass that back your way uh, very very quickly before we go Joan Louise on YouTube says thoroughly enjoying the show I've been teaching quilting piecing since 1996 and this is such a good way to get motivated that Bernie corner is down to you when are you back with us here oh that's fab thank you Jimmy so I'm I'm now I'm going to break up today I'm not going to work tomorrow and I'm back I've been a rebel I'm back um with a softer side on the 5th of January so a Merry Christmas to everyone from me and I hope you have a fantastic break as well and hopefully you'll do lots of sewing and send us lots of pictures so we can see what you've been making. Oh bless you have a wonderful wonderful Christmas Bernie I've really really loved the show it's great actually to get really get interactive with a show like this and thank you uh, for your company as well and listen don't you don't you go anywhere don't you go anywhere yet because I'm back here in an hour's time I'm swapping our lovely Bernie for our lovely Jan Brown and we've got a launch party we've got so much coming up including a year of craft and I think it might be Jan's first time diving into a year of craft as well so if you've got yours get it ready for about an hour's time where we will be back here at Crafters TV but as I said don't you go anywhere because we've all got you know at three o'clock on Christmas Day here in the UK it's a very very much a tradition that we all sit down to watch Her Majesty the Queen it's no different here at Crafters TV here is our very own majestic Sarah Davis to talk to you Hey guys, I just wanted to bob in and take one last chance to wish you all of the joys of the season and say I hope you have a wonderful time over the Christmas period. And I wanted to pop in because Wednesday is going to be our last day of showing live shows for a few days. That's right, I've said the team can have a few days off a well-earned rest over the Christmas period. And I just wanted to take time to explain to you exactly why that was. So you'll know, those of you who've been watching live with us every day since March, my team have worked their absolute socks off to deliver outstanding shows, outstanding presentations, and honestly deliver everything I've asked of them and so much more. And I wanted to be able to say to them, go and have a well-earned rest. Go and spend time with your families. Go and spend days slobbing in your pyjamas all day, not really getting out of bed. Go and have a proper rest because honestly, everyone's ready for it. Not just the team that you see in front of the camera, but all of the people behind the scenes who work tirelessly every day to make Crafters TV the huge success that it is. And I just wanted to pop in in person and explain to you why I wanted the teams to have that time off, why it was so important to me. And I'm sure as valued customers and friends, you will totally understand and join me in wishing them a wonderful and well-deserved Christmas break. 
Now, I will be back on the 4th of January to kick off a fantastic first week of the new year. I promise you we've got some amazing shows, some big launches, even that first week in January, and it's going to be well worth the wait. So, I hope you guys go and enjoy the festive season too. Uh, we'll all see you on the 4th of January, but in the meantime, make sure you enjoy some of what have been our favourite shows from over the years.